have just something that will be stirred. Oh, right. Councilor Twill is is on. What's that? Councilor Twill is on the line. Councilor Twill is on the line. It's coming into his via telephone. So this month is International Breast Cancer Awareness. I know this Councilor uh, Bernard is wearing the pink ribbon. We are getting pink ribbons in for this uh, for this. Uh, Awareness Month. So tonight we'll be lighting our bell tower in pink to recognize International Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, as you may have heard earlier this year, the World Health Organization, WHO, declared breast cancer the most diagnosed cancer in the world. More than 27,000 Canadians will be diagnosed this year alone. And we all know someone affected by cancer. Uh, affected by breast cancer, a mother, a sister, my sister being one, the oldest sister, a wife or a friend. So there will be pink ribbons coming to uh, celebrate the international uh, breast cancer awareness a month, the whole month. Okay, declarations of conflict of interest. Mr. Uh, Councillor Robert, mm -hmm. planning? Yes, you were here. So planning uh, number four, okay, which is the Towers Road, and uh, also number six, the short-term rent rental. Anything moving forward? As you know, my partner spouse is the CEO of the Tourism Ministry, Prince Edward Island. Okay, and I don't know if our solicitor agrees, but she represents industry, and just curious, I guess. I'll ask the solicitor if, if he believes I'm in conflict. David, do you want to get an opinion? Number six. Yeah, so it's just anything to do short term. To, to go to a public consultation on it. Anything, anything short term rental moving forward. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to? Safety, yes. I'd say best to recuse. Yeah. Okay. okay, so those two. Councilor Yankov? Um, and it's, I could ask the solicitor the same thing. Go ahead. Um, you know, item number five. Under planning? Yes. Which the last is, time we had an issue with this uh, company, I was uh, told I was in conflict. So and you didn't declare conflict of interest during the debate? I just wanted to make sure. So you're going out on conflict of interest for number, number five? five? Unless Mr. Dooley tells me otherwise. I think he, she declared it in kind of your... This is through Mr. Murphy. Yeah. On yeah. the board. Yeah. On the board. Yeah. This is probably the other uh, you're going to err on the side of, side of caution? Yeah, yes, as, as I think as council knows, as city solicitors, we tend to err on the side of caution. Uh -huh. It's not to say that if somebody took this to court and the judge had to assess it, that they might necessarily conclude there's a conflict. No. But if someone's in conflict, it can become a basis for somebody who doesn't like council's decision to try to get the decision yeah. overturned on a, right. let's say, a technicality. So we tend to err on the side of caution. And so you'll step out on number five and council revert on number four six, four six. Four six. <laughs> any others okay approval of the agenda moved by councillor ramsey second by the deputy mayor cody all in favor councillor twill yay or nay yay okay so you have the minutes regular monthly meeting september 13th 2021 Special meeting open September 27th, 2021. Public meeting planning September 28th, 2021. Draft minutes will be brought forward at the adoption of the regular monthly meeting on November 8th, 2021. Someone want to move that? Council Rebert, second Council Bernard. All those in favor? Council Twilly, yay or nay? Yay. Okay, business arising. Here are the minutes. Seeing none. Councilor Darren McLeod. Thank you very much. Number one, six point one, Planning and Heritage. Planning and Heritage Committee. Uh, the event on September fourteenth. Uh, copy of the minutes are uh, in your package. Uh, the Planning Board met on Monday, October fourth. The minutes are in your package as well. The Heritage Board met on September twenty seventh. Uh, copies of that are in the in the package. The Design Review Board met on September twentieth. Those minutes are there as well, and the Affordable Housing Committee met on September 21st. So copies of the uh, is in the package. So we have uh, um, 
seven in there resolutions for this evening, but one I'm going to ask for a referral. Which one is that, uh, sir? Number seven, which is the 35 Prince Street. Want to defer or refer? Yeah, uh, well, refer because it was deferred already, and we just uh, wanted one or two the public, uh, or sorry, the planning board first before it comes back to us. What's out of that? Number, 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 number seven, seven, 35 the, Prince. The restaurant on 35 Prince. So, Hit number 33. Yeah, you didn't make it to the planning board, so uh, I would like to go back to the planning board before it comes here, just simply because the procedure say that things should come as a recommendation from the committee. So, outside of that, I'm good to go. Any questions, concerns? We'll do our best for that. Thank you. Okay. So, we had number one. Fourteen Athol Drive. Yes, Your Worship. Kelly, do you have a resolution there? Yes, Your Worship. Moved by Councilor McLeod, a second by Councilor McCabe. That the request for two major variances to increase the maximum permitted floor area from 750 square feet to 1,098 square feet. And uh, number two, increase the maximum permitted height from 17.5 feet to 22.5 feet in order to fit a new two-story accessory detached garage building at 14 Ethel Drive, PID 589697, be rejected, Your Worship. Okay. So it's to reject. Do you want to speak to them? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> Thank you, um, Council McLeod, for bringing this this forward. Just a little refresher, I guess, for Council. Back in August, this application was before us, and we deferred it back um, to see if we could come up with a little more suitable plan. The initial ask in August was for uh, a building of 2,400 square feet and uh, 27, almost 28 uh, feet in, in height. And uh, staff and working with the applicant, he has come back with a, with a building of 1,100 square feet and a total height of, of about 22 feet. Now, that's quite, a, quite a, in, an improvement from what we saw in August. And I just want to say that uh, this particular loft, it's, it's 0.38 of an acre. So it's a little bit of a larger loft than maybe we would typically see in the city of Charlottetown. And that's proven by no uh, side back, uh, rear yard setbacks, and there's no um, side yard setback. So there's lots of room on this property uh, for this building. And if you drove by the property or seen uh, any photos, there's a mature tree line that surrounds this property also. So this this building will be will be very well hidden um, from any neighbors' uh, sight lines. And the increase to get to 1,100 square feet, the actual footprint of the building is only 750 square feet, and that's what's allowed under the bylaw. He's just looking to add um, a little bit of height, and that extra height gets added onto the square footage. But the footprint of the building is within reason, 750 square feet. So I would ask council, after the applicant working with the staff, to to reject this application and uh, and allow allow the applicant to proceed with uh, with the building that he's he's proposing. So you, you, to re you want to accept, not reject. It's to reject exactly. Yeah, so we're yeah. You, you're going with the answer. Anyone else? Councillor McCabe. McCabe, and then yeah. Councillor Duffy. Yeah, thank you. Um, <coughs> I also um, actually in planning committee supported this application and. And I, I agree that the it is a larger yard, yard size, but also my question at that time was if we if the applicant attached this with a roof line, it would be an as of right build. So we're into the last application that they can go to for a detached building of this type, and I will be supporting this application because I think it makes sense. Councillor Duff. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, once again, um, we, we as a group, some in the group, I guess, it loses loses sight of the fact that we're dealing with a bylaw here. We're dealing with a law. And, and when you're dealing with a law, uh, you just can't give permission to break the law because I, I need more space or whatever. The guy, sure, he gave it a good shot, but he's still 400 square feet over against, you know, outside the, what, what our law dictates you have to have. With no reason, you know, 
what, what is it? I can live with a variance. You know, when, when there's a variance requested of us that's very minor and is not, not a, you know, not a big deal, say a, a foot or a foot and a half or whatever, a bit more land, and it's out in the middle of nowhere, you know, you can, and, and the reason is that he needs it for a good purpose, you can, you can kind of weigh the, the good and the bad and, and come up with a compromise or, or, or grant it to him. But in, in these particular, we had one last month, and Councillor uh, McLeod and I uh, argued against it, and one of McLeod's, Councillor McLeod's uh, remarks was, it won't be long that more will, back, more will be back looking for garages that exceed the, the parameters that is allowed under the law. It's just because no one, no one complained in the area, you can't enforce laws just by the mere fact that, well, Nobody, nobody kind of was upset with it. We have a law there. The purpose of the law is to develop this municipality in an orderly fashion. And every, mo uh, every uh, month we seem to be in here and it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. So I, I'm sorry, I can't support this effort. I can, I can support the rejection. Thank you. So, Councilor Duffy, were you referring to 247 Riley Road? Yes. Last month? Yes. Was that a rezoning? Pardon? Was that a rezoning last year? Yes, okay. yeah, it was. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Councillor uh, Councillor Drawn and then Councilman. <coughs> Thank you, Worship. I, I just I didn't realize that the footprint is the same. So, what what is the reasoning? Is it just because it's a second level, or or is an apartment going on the second level? Is, could someone clarify that? Do you want to? Okay. Do you want to clarify? Do you um, want to yield to? <coughs> yeah. So. Um, the applicant plans on, on uh, thank you for your question, Councilman. Um, so um, he plans on, on having, having some space up there. Um, it could be a gym for his wife, uh, type of thing. Um, and there could be a bath, there's probably going to be a bathroom in it. And um, so it kind of adds to the square footage, even though the building is 750 square feet, but you are tacked on to the amount of space that you have above. And uh, he's exceeded that. So that's the kind of the in the mix is how much is do you want to go above the, the allowed amount so um you know uh, at the end of the day you know we should look at you know if this is we ever was to go ahead i don't know if it's going enough but we should look at maybe some type of development agreement so that it doesn't get turned into an airbnb you know there's lots of potential what you can do with that once you have the building up right there's all kinds of things but his intentions are good and, and I, I don't think he's got any plans for that but at the end of the day, you know, we should look at that perhaps if it does go forward because it is a big space and you can do lots with it. I hope that answers your question. Right, Kelsey. It does. I'm just wondering, like, is it a, was it intended to be an apartment or, you know, we're, we're in a housing crisis as everything that comes in floor planning, um, you know, people use that. So I was thinking maybe he could, you know, have it there for someone to stay overnight or, or something like that. It just, it doesn't make sense if it, it if it's allowable just for a garage, but you turn it into a second story that you want storage, it doesn't seem to, I, I don't know much about the bylaw, but we're passing a lot of things lately that, you know, this kind of conflicts with. So, you know, I, I, I'd certainly support it because of the footprint that we're, that we're looking at. But thank you for clarifying that. Councilor Bernard, then Councilor Bernard. Councilor Bernard. Yeah, I think it comes from drawing was the last question I was going to ask. I'm trying to figure out this, the square footage of 750. And, and so my understanding from what I'm reading through it is five feet now above the allowable. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, and I didn't understand what the 750. So 750 is the first floor. This yes. is the second floor on top of it. That's another four square feet. Okay. Correct. Um, okay. And still five feet above the allowable. Yeah. And it's on a quarter of an acre of land. Plus, <laughs> Councillor Bird. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, and Councillor Duran did cover, I guess, part of my question. Just want to again go back to the apartment. Is is it is that the purpose of this? Do you, no. do you believe did he state at any time the developer that he was going to use this as an apartment? Uh, no, no, no. It, he's got. Um, it, it's they've grown at home a little bit. So the, his wife works from home, and uh, she needs to work every area type of thing to help and then have an office for her to work. And with a small bathroom, and then the, the lower level, um, it's never even made clear as to what he's doing with the lower level. But it is uh, just a garage, and then um, 
I'm not sure what he plans to do it. But I just think, you know, from the city's well being, we probably, <coughs> you know, we should look at that and say, you know, if he sells it, what's the next person going to do with that big space, right? You could do lots, you could turn it into apartments, you could turn it into, you know, and then it's an error one. So that, that's my concern with it. But, uh, that's what it is. Claire, you want to yeah, ask a follow up, supplementary question, sir? Yeah, if, if it could be used for uh, an apartment in the future, then I would certainly support it. I think it's, it's a good idea to have this kind of <coughs> invincible density, if you will, in the neighborhood. And this is just a, another option. Um, you know, I, I heard you talk about the Airbnb and stuff. I don't think Airbnbs would be permissible mm -hmm. in accessory apartments or garden suites, anyways. So I, I wouldn't worry about that, um, that piece at all. Um, but I think that if there is the opportunity, which I, by the sound of the argument, plumbing and stuff, so. You know, we're only talking about five feet that Council Bernard does <coughs> in height. You know, and, and back to the council, <coughs> I, I agree with you. We do have bylaws in place. I, I totally agree. But again, I said this last month too is that, you know, every month we come here with, with 10 to 15 uh, applications for planning. If everything met the bylaws, then then we never have a planning report. <laughs> so we come in here because it always, it's, always, it's always someone looking to change the bylaws stretch the body loss, feet, whatever. And that's our decision to make at the time, common sense versus, <coughs> and I, don't, I don't disagree with you, I'm just saying that yeah. we wouldn't have any plans for reports. So the height variance is a 29% increase. Yeah. Councilor Tuffy, you took yes, your worship. worship. Your worship, this, this is the same argument that went on last month. Like, <laughs> we have a bylaw, but now people are starting to surmise in the future what he might put in it, be it a gym or, or a, an Airbnb, it doesn't matter. He's 400 feet, square feet, in excess of what the bylaw says. <coughs> and, and whether, like, what he's going to do, or even the five and a half feet that uh, Councilman McCla uh, Council Bernard has uh, alluded to, like, he just wants to build bigger than the bylaw is. So we're not exceeding the This is like a kangaroo court. This is like a three act first. The, the parking lot meetings have, like, this is useless to even be discussing this in here. The phone calls have been made, met. The elevator meetings have been held. The parking lot get togethers have been talked about. I mean, it's, it's, it's set. So we're wasting our time. And we're always wasting our time because it always goes down to the fact that forget about the bylaw. Let's get elected on November the 7th, 2022. Thank you, Worship. Okay, there, <laughs> Councillor Duffy. I know that politics okay. is part of the system that we're in. Councillor Yanka? Thank you. We're listening. Thank you. Um, so, I am going to go with Council's or with um, staff's recommendation on this one 46.4% over the existing bylaw in one area, 28.9%. Um, or vice versa, I apologize. And when the applicant was asked, you know, the, one of the reasons was the comment that they were running out of space. So I see that as you're running out of space and you're going to put an addition on your house. And if he didn't have that option, perhaps we could have looked at this, but he has the, the space and the ability to to put an extension onto his home and still have all of the, all of the things he needs. So it's not necessary to go go against the bylaw when there are other options for that. Thank you. Question? Questions called. Questions called. All those in favor of rejecting the two-story accessory building at 14 Alpha Drive, please put up your hands. Okay, all those four. All, the, all those no, hold on, hold on, just one yeah, second. Yeah. The rejection, the rejection yeah. is Tweel, Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? <coughs> to the to the uh, planning board's resolution to reject the applicant's request. Are you against it or for it? I'm against the rejection. So just put the hands up again. Yep. So you're against the rejection. He's against the rejection. So those against the rejection, one, two, three, four. Councillor Tweel is five. So Councillor from the area has been presented the argument. I looked at the background. I'm supporting the rejection. Uh, sorry, I'm against the rejection. So you have to put up another resolution. So the second resolution will be to approve it. So we'll have another vote. Another 
逻辑。调整啊，就调整。Yes, Your Worship. Your Worship, we resolve that the request for two major variances to number one, increase the maximum permitted floor area to 700, sorry, from 750 square feet to 1,098 square feet, and number two, increase the maximum permitted height from 17.5 feet to 22.5 feet in order to permit a two-story accessory detached garage building at 14 Athol Drive, PID 589-697, be approved. Your Worship. Okay. Question? Questions, Colin. All those in favor, please raise your hand of approving this. One, two, three, four, five. Councillor Twill? In favor. Okay. Just put your hands up again, please, in, in favor of it. In favor of approving. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we in number two here? No, no, no. Still, we're, we're, oh, I, I, we're, we're 14 now. So we I thought we would have gone. Just keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor of the application. All those against? That's where you're going. <laughs> okay. Councilor Brown, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm in favor. Three, three, two, three. Your Worship? In favor. Moved by Councillor McLeod, and second by Councillor McCabe. Resolved to request to amend Appendix A, future land use map of the City of Charlottetown plan from low density residential to medium density residential for 38 Palmer Lane, PID 275156. And number two, amend Appendix G, zoning map of the zoning development bylaw from low density residential or two zone to medium density residential townhouse zone three. R, sorry, R-3T um, for 38 Amber, 38 Palmer Lane, PID 275156. And number three, amend Appendix G zoning of the zoning and the zoning map of the zoning and development bylaw from apartment residential R-4 zone to a medium density uh, residential zone for a portion of the property at 40 Palmer Lane, PID 275164. Okay. Lane. I have a question. Okay, just one second. We have Councillor Ramsey. <coughs> Worship, is this the same application that came through with us last year? Councillor McLeod. I'm trying to refresh my memory. Is that the package? No, Thank you for uh, your report. No, that was uh, for an apartment building, Councillor Ramsey. This is for townhouses. It's the same property. So, same property. Same property. Same property, but uh, they come back with another plan. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Councillor Tweel. Thank you. Um, as you can recall, the last resolution that was passed by council on the 6-4 vote was overturned in Iraq. And the residents are very upset with council's decision. Um, in terms of density, my first question is, uh, how much in terms of square footage are we talking about in terms of density? Do you want to answer that, I'll sir? Ask, or, I'll let Mr. Forbes answer Mr. that. Mr. Forbes, can you uh, provide an answer to Councillor Wheeler, Ward 4? Yes, sir. Uh, I can. The, the previous uh, uh, proposal was for uh, an apartment building, and this is for townhouses. And the, I, um, I'm just, uh, the, it's in your report, but I think it's dropped from 18 apartment units to 12 townhouse units. Thank you, Your Worship. And the application but, previous but, Mr. Forbes was my that second question. Zoning? My second question is, did the applicant have an opportunity to go out and canvass the neighbors that are going to be directly affected by this proposed development? And if the applicant did, what was the feedback from the residents in the immediate area? Um, we look at the history of this particular property. This will be now the fourth occasion where the applicant has been before City Council and the residents uh, are adamantly opposed. So 
uh, with, with the change of the dynamic of the building going from an apartment building to townhouses, uh, I guess my question is to staff and, and planning board, uh, what dynamic has changed where you really believe the residents are going to enthusiastically embrace this development? Thank you very much, Councilor Tweedle. Uh, um, so, I think the applicant has been listening. Um, he's come back with this one. Uh, I think the, the residents of the area have to kind of, I guess I'll first start by saying that the city policy is to do, you know, lot infill, and, and this lot's been there vacant for some time. Um, I think with the townhouse idea, which, you know, I will support the public consultation simply because uh, I think, you know, at sooner or later, we got to keep that school flourishing. We need to keep the community, uh, you know, as people get older, we need to have younger groups of families move in. And this is a, an exact opportunity. Um, there's only going to be the one out at uh, Councillor Tweedle coming out onto Palmer's Lane. The rest will use the existing driveway from the apartment buildings. Uh, the townhouse also being turned will act as a buffer. Um, it'll take away from the air one side up and down the street. It'll take away that industrial look of the apartment buildings. Uh, it will uh, take away the car wash, uh, the look of that. So it would kind of, it does fit into the community a little better. Um, of course, we don't live there, so the applicants might have some other concerns. I, I understand that, and that's why we have a public meeting. But um, so. I guess that's probably my answer to it is that it's a better fit than whatever was proposed before Councilor Twill and, and uh, the residents, you know, after seeing it and coming to the public meeting, you know, uh, and I believe the applicant, Alex, you might be able to answer, but I think the applicant has all intentions of going door to door um, if he hasn't already, um, but uh, maybe Alex can share and share the light on that. And thank you. Mr. Forbes. Your Worship, I'm, on, I'm uncertain. Uh, if this is uh, Royal Palmer Thompson's application. She may know that answer, but I'm I'm, I'm not aware that he is or isn't, so I, I can't be confirmed. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Todd, we're just going to move on yeah. to some questions. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, I'll just get that answer for you, Councilor Tweedle. Councilor Duffy, he did have his hand up. Yeah. Councilor Thank you, Your Worship. McCabe. No. Councilor Yankoff, and then Councilor Lavar. This is simply a request to go to a public consultation. Correct. Yes or no. Correct. These are all questions being asked. This is why we end up being here for three hours. So, public you, consultation, yes or no, and we'll deal with the questions at that point in time. You called the question. Pardon? You called. Yes, I, I have another yes. question, Thank Mr. You. Mayor. Questions been called. Questions called. Questions been called. All those in favor of going to a public consultation for 38 Palmer's Lane, please put up your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, so councillors, okay, Deputy Mayor Cody, councillors Bernard, McCabe, Duffy, Ramsey <clears throat> on this side, Councillor Yankov, Councillor McLeod, and Councillor Rivera. All those against? Councillor Tweedy, yay or nay? No. Okay, eight, two. Your Worship, moved by Councillor McLeod, a second by Councillor McCabe, that the request to amend Appendix C approve site specific exemptions as per Section 311. Site specific exemptions of the zoning and development bylaw to exempt 25 to the cloud crescent PID 1106 400 and 1123686 from section 37.1 of the zoning and development bylaw to allow a medical, health, and dental office as defined in the zoning and development bylaw as a permitted use on the subject property be approved to proceed to public consultation. Okay, now the public meeting. Okay. Question call? Question call. Okay. All those in favor to go to a public consultation on um, for 25 McLeod Crescent. Deputy Mayor Cody. Councilor Bernard. Councilor McCabe. Councilor Duffy. Councilor Ramsey. Councilors Duran. Reverd. Yankoff. Tweel. Councilor Tweel. Yay or nay? In favor. Okay. And McLeod. Thank you, Councilor. 10 0. Councilor Reverd. Next one. No, stepping over first, Your Worship. Yeah. Your Worship, moved by Council McLeod and second by Council McCabe, that the application submitted by APM on behalf of Killam Properties showing the architectural design drawings and working site plans for phase one of this development on the corner of Towers Road and Mount Everett Road at PID 390534, 390559, and 390552 be approved 
subject to section 42.2.6 of the zoning and development bylaw your worship Councilor Cloud any information uh yeah so um uh, i'm not sure if uh um how you want to go but just so in the package you'll see um there's two reports the, the existing report that we had and then the, the report was changed after planning board so uh so you'll see it uh, it's it's highlighted in gray and um planning board's recommendation it was to bring it here with uh, option number one, which was to uh, go for the changes to the exterior of the building without going to a public meeting. Um, there was uh, lots of consultation happening in this one. And, uh, um, I don't think anyone was in disagreement of that the changes were better, but in the comprehensive area of development, um, the applicant can, can be stuck to the idea that whatever was put on the picture of the advertisement could, uh, could be held to what um, is to be built. Um, at the time, um, the applicant did express the reason they put a building there was simply because they had to put something there. Um, and they, we as a group as well understand that, you know, in future comprehensive development agreements that we need to make sure the applicant is aware of that, that you know, uh, so they put up a vertical metal looking structures and uh, um, this is much more pleasing. Um, it's got lots of archways and, and uh, the rear edges were some, you know, separated and made, and made more like looking like homes instead of the industrial one. And uh, you know, we, you know, we're not planners at Planning Board. Uh, we're not architects, um, so we asked for staff's uh, support and giving us some help with this one. It was a, it was kind of a hard one to, you know, uh, uh, to deal with because you know, you, you know, was there changes made to the structural well? No, there wasn't. There was no structural change made. It's all exterior, so um, that's why it's here today. We're looking forward to go ahead. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, and you're right. There has been a lot of discussion on this particular application, and we, as a council, have already voted to send this to a public meeting, at which the applicant pulled out of that public meeting. He came back, and now we're recommending that never mind the public meeting, and we'll just go ahead. And I guess for me, the point that sticks out on this application was the original question, do you deem the changes substantial enough to go to a pop, back to a public meeting initially? And, and we had discussion in our planning board and the answer to that question was yes, they were. Uh, unfortunately, like we don't want to go back and discuss anything other than the design, but the process was to follow the design. And for me, I'm sticking to that original <coughs> question. I will be supporting the application. Councilor McCabe. Good. Thank you very much, Councilor McCabe. Uh, so yeah, you're right. Um, so that's why the two packages are there, the original package of where we couldn't make our mind up whether or not it was structural or not because we're not engineers. So we were going to go to a public meeting. The applicant at the same time was doing the foundation and the permit had to be done for that. So that's the reason why they pulled the permit for the, again, it's for the outside of the exterior of the building at the time. But um, we discussed heavy with staff that we want a recommendation. Unfortunately for us, as planning board uh, residential members and, and council we're not architects so we, we needed your help staff we kept saying that we need your help so it was a long day of battle with staff yeah uh, finally came through and said yes they recommend option one where it did not have to go to a public meeting that there was no structural changes uh, the foundations didn't change and that they felt comfortable enough saying to the planning board we're making a recommendation so we took that recommendation and uh, we moved forward without having to go to the public meeting that was basically the process. Thank you. Councilor Ramsey. Thanks. Um, just to reiterate and build a little bit on what Councilor McLeod said, we wouldn't have ended up here last month um, with, the, with the vote to go to public consultation with this um, development again if staff had done what we're, what we're told to expect from them in all of the reports that we get and that is to receive a recommendation of staff before we move forward. So the planning board, we were stuck and we were not comfortable with that because we are not planners. So this time the process was followed properly and we did receive a recommendation from the planning staff, which was that it was not necessary to take this back to public consultation, that the design to them was sufficient. So therefore planning board supported planning staff and here we are tonight. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. And I guess it's all clear as mud, but at the same time, 
it's the same thing, but it's just the same building, square foot, and the whole nine yards is just up there. They might be changing the front exactly. of it or the side building or from siding to break or break to siding or vice yeah. versa. That, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head yeah. up. Yeah, so thank you very much, Councilor Ramsey. So, yes, there are no changes in the footprint, no changes in the amount of units. The only difference is the, the it's going to have clad on the outside and nice horizontal instead of the vertical metal that was shown in the picture. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's where it is. Thank you. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you. Talking about confusion in the public. <laughs> oh, I'm confused. So, one day we have our planning people telling us that it has to go to a public meeting yeah. because they're changing the outside, the look of it. We always knew the foundation was the same, but even down the color, if it changes, it's supposed to go to a public meeting. And now we find out tonight, at least when I'm here, we don't need to go to a public meeting. That's right, that's the recommendation. No. Correct? Why was the recommendation two months ago? Okay. Councilor McLeod. It's a topic that you pull rather than that. I don't need to nail on it, feel free to step in. But, but when you have a comprehensive area development agreement, so you get your overall pictures done, okay, there, and, the, and the public has had a chance to see it, everyone's spoke on it, it's a go or something. No, no, I'm not aware of it. So it's, it's a go. So, but within the comprehensive area development agreement, various permits have to be passed in as you go yeah. along, right? So. The first time around, the exterior of the building, the, the foundation was improved. So that's kind of a complicated thing. So then when he pulled it back, got his permit for his application, which probably shouldn't have done first, then that really cleared up the mud a lot, that, that there was no structural changes being made. And the staff, planning staff wanted support from the, the planning board wanted support from the planning staff to please help us pick one, number one or number two, which are options within their comprehensive area development agreement where the rules can be a little actually daisy as to whether you can go to a public meeting or do you think the rules, he's within the, in the changes without going to a public meeting. So structurally, everybody was in favor of the, of the changes. It, it, or the, the look of the buildings, it was much nicer, more pleasant to the eye, more homey looking. It's just that because the permit but the foundation wasn't in it the first time where it is the second time. So it made it more clear that there was no structural changes and that's why we're here now saying we're okay with the outside of the building being changed. Thank you, Councilman Eric. Yeah. Um, the CDA zone, and, and I was always under the impression that I can recall years ago when we used to have zones that we would approve. Yeah. And the plans that we've seen, once the zone was approved, they changed it. So we brought in the CDA zone, which was right down to the color of the building. Mm -hmm. That was shown and it changed, it goes to a public meeting. Mm -hmm. Did not know the foundation or, you know, obviously the structure changed that has to be back to I don't have a real problem with it because the upgrades apparently, from what I see here, it, it's more attractive. Oh, well, so, you know, yeah. that, that, that's great this time. Mm -hmm. But talk about confusing. I know. The public who's so looking in and, and listening to this saying, okay, you know, when we even had it booked on for yeah. one of the public meetings, and all of a sudden, okay, no shell. Okay. And now it, it, it really feels like we're coming around the back door yeah. getting this done for. No, I just, I'll fix the I'm not saying that. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Well, no, no, right? no, I'm not you know, disagreeing. I just said, you know what? what? If the upgrades are that much better, then what's the big deal for going to a public yeah. And one well, step, um, public meetings take time. Right? Yeah. And and sorry, <coughs> and the process the process will be slowed down tremendously. Right? It'll be another two months before he's able to continue on. Like they're ready to start building it. And we're going to, you know, now under this development, I'm going to let Alex explain it so that the option will one and two, whether or not to go to a public meeting or not. And so future, we can we can understand this a little more. I'll get Alex explain the, the option that's within the CDA zone. Okay, Mr. Forbes, could you clarify and so, so give us more sure. information? Yep. The, the bylaw, Thank you, sir. The bylaw reads that when you're in a CDA zone. In what section is that, sir? Uh, it is uh, 42. Uh, I'm just looking right into it. Right. It's in the 42.2.7, uh, and uh, uh, and but uh, uh, actually 42.7. Uh, uh, in, in the 42 section, there's a whole uh, a number of sequence of uh, who makes a decision after an application has been out to a public meeting, and uh, th this isn't a new application. Every time you show a concept plan. Uh, council gets direction from council in regard to putting a development agreement together with all the specifications that were a part of the public meeting, including the design, which we did. So, uh, so when uh, 
it is purposely put in place that way so that you show a concept, uh, it, it's more general, but then when you come in with your actual architectural plans and your site plan, whether it's this application or any, it goes back and the, the recommendation is uh, uh, subsequent to approval of the development concept plan, which you did and you approved with a, with a development agreement, the working site plan and buildings shall be approved on the recommendation of the planning board for each phase within the CDA zone, provided it is in the opinion of council, consistent with the overall development concept plan and any schedules attached thereto. So, you know, there, there are mechanisms in the zoning bylaw. If staff feel that it's not a significant change, we can, we can make those changes. They could be tiny little changes, but, but this isn't one of them. It, every time it loops back, so when it looped back, staff identified the difference in the de development concept plan and the architectural designs. So, you know, we needed a recommendation from planning board and council. The reason that, you know, it, it's, it's not really, in my opinion, up to, up to staff in regard to, I'm okay with the architectural design. I made it very clear the quality of the two designs, in my opinion, was uh, what was uh, similar. Uh, it wasn't dropping the quality of the building. So, uh, but but again, somebody has to make the decision. So, planning board subsequently decided to recommend that it not go back to a hearing, uh, and then council is going to have to make a, a decision one way or the other whether they want to go back to a public hearing. Thank you, Worship. Council Clerk, would, would this go back to the architectural design process? Has it? Uh, Has it changed the inside? Mr. Your Worship, the, 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 uh, the, design, review the design review process is for another area of the city and was never really a portion, wasn't contemplated in the CDA zone. Maybe it should be in the future. We can, we can discuss that, but, but that, they couldn't be, you couldn't direct it to them because the provisions in the bylaw weren't to send it to design review. It's just the way that it reads. It okay. needs to go back to council. Council goes, I see the original concept. I see the, the site plan and the elevations. Are we okay with it? Yes or no? Yeah, you know what? From what I've seen in the drawings, I'm okay with it. Right. The problem I have with is the message we sent it to the public. And now and now I hear that the council is saying that the staff feels a substantial change. No, no, no. Staff, staff, staff never. Staff have got to point out to council. The fact is, is that we get it. We get. We got the development concept plan. Whether it's this application or any, uh, it comes back through. Staff will. All staff do is say, "This is exactly what was approved," uh, and, and and we just send it along. And so then the planning board and council typically deal with it. Uh, when, when I was asked, in my opinion, my Laurel or her opinion, we're not opposed to it, but. But there was an agreement made with the public uh, as a part of the development agreement. And somebody needs to, to direct staff, are we comfortable with that change or not? And that's where we are. Staff are okay with it. So, and, and, but I heard earlier that in the planning meeting, yeah. that it was considered a substantial change. And it was a substantial change. To me, that requires going back to the meeting. Well, I, I guess for me, you know what, I've seen the drawings, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong going back to public showing them. Here's, here's, here's what they're looking to upgrade to, the only problem. And I think at least we follow the, what, what the perception of people expect. Council Bernard is saying is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, the only part that he was out on, and it's certainly to not his, his fault, is that we wouldn't have went, we wouldn't have answered the question the way we did if first the first time we went to the planning board meeting if staff had done what they do in every other report which is give a recommendation so this time we asked for the staff's recommendation so if you notice this time we're back because both staff and planning board recommend that the design is not substantial enough to deem it necessary to go back to a public consultation so the last time we were here Staff refused to give us a recommendation. So as a planning board, we thought we're not planners. We're not answering that question ourselves. So let's take it back to to the uh, to the council and decide. So instead, it was deferred, deferred back. And this time, staff did do what they normally do in any other report, and they gave us a recommendation. So we've got two recommendations, one from staff and one from planning board, and that's why we're back this time. Good. Does that make sense? Good question. Councilor McCabe, 
And I think it, thank you. And I think all of these points are well taken. It kind of reminds me, brings me back to our planning board discussion. But I think the question goes, and there was different perspectives. What Councilor Bernard was asking, one of their architect planning board members did say this is a substantial enough change in design that it should go back to public meeting. Right, all that? Yeah, but. But we voted as a planning board, it came out. But but I'm saying that there is that piece for me. This is why I'm sticking to where I'm sticking. That was my reason. Councillor McLeod and then Councillor, just to rebuttal that, again, that was during the first time around. No, that was at our last meeting. We, once staff made their mind up that, that uh, if this was a not a substantial change, we all voted for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, what do you it think? Was, it was, I read here as Councilor Yankov does, staff recommendation, approve. Yeah. I also read board recommendation, approve. Yes. And I hear from Councilor uh, uh, okay. McCabe that one member of the planning board said it was a substantial change. No, that was the discussion I was clarifying. Yeah. So was it a member of the planning board that said it was a substantial change? Yeah. Well, just no, a member. It was just a personal, it was discussion. Yeah. But one, you know, my, my point is this, my point is, we listen to approvals that come from the board. We don't, you know, the, the consensus of the board, not one individual who has a, a, an opinion. You wanted me to justify every time why I'm going against what staff recommended, so I'm okay. making my point. Okay, to okay, okay. Just, Thank you. can we just... We have two bodies. We have the staff yeah. made an approval, yeah. recommendation, and then we the have board. another body called uh, the planning board. It made an approval recommendation, so I don't get the argument. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Call the question. I'll call the question. Call the question. The worst, I have a question. The question was called. No, I, I didn't have a chance to ask any questions. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor Twill. We have to allow that exception. Go ahead. Well, um, I, I guess the question is in, in terms of the pro process and the expectations on um, behalf of the community, the people in Sherwood. We're expecting a public meeting, and and then the public meeting was postponed in the event that it went back to planning board uh, to look at the changes that were made, and and then the uh, changes that were made were before coming at a public meeting, and now uh, the public process in terms of participation has all been been eliminated. So the question I have for the solicitor is. How would that hold up in Iraq? Would, would uh, you know, in terms of in terms of council being successful with with passing a resolution, uh, what would be the probability of this resolution being overturned at Iraq? Uh, Councilor Tweel, we're not going to bring in our solicitor for uh, an opinion on if it goes here or if it goes there. Do you have another question? Yeah, I have another question, Your Worship. Maybe you can help me with this. How do, you, how do you uh justify to the community that uh there was an expectation for a public meeting and now we're 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 not going to consult with the public that uh, because as councillor duffy said planning board discussed it uh the planning department recommended and now it's here at council to go the, with the resolution to be approved subject to section 42.2.6 of the zoning development bylaw that's where it's coming from do you agree with that, Mr. Mayor? What's that? Do you agree with that, sir? Well, that's that's what we have in front of us. So let's let's vote on it. Questions being called. Questions called. Questions, call. Questions up and called. So, Councilor Wheel will be calling on for your vote. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. So we have Councilors Duffy, Ramsey, Councilor Jacob, and Councilor McLeod in favor. All those against. Deputy Mayor Cody, Councillors McCabe, Bernard, Councillor Duran, Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? Opposed. Okay, so it's five. So we have to develop what is the process, Mr. Forbes? Mr. Forbes uh, says to, to, has to go to public consultation. Yep. You, you, you can search so as we put the resolution on the floor. Yeah, so can you just wait, get the resolution, oh, sorry, please?
是零零年，应该是九五。Your Worship, moved by Councilor Cloud, seconded by Councilor Cabe. That the application submitted by APM on behalf of Killam Property, showing the architectural design drawings and working site plans for Phase One of this development on the corner of Towers Road and Mount Everett Road, PID 390534, 390559, and 390542, be sent to a public meeting. Councilor Bernard, do you want to speak? Uh, Councilor Bernard, can I just ask the the chair? He wanted to speak first. Uh -huh. Do you want to yeah. sorry I, I just want to clarify sorry. on the public meeting side of things that, yeah. that uh, this is clearly just the talk about the exterior of the building That's correct right that needs to be that needs to be clear in this room first right that they, they we can't talk about roads or driveways or anything else this is strictly just to talk about the other side of the building so I just want to make sure everybody was clear with that that this isn't uh, an open up big can of worms thing this is we're strictly talking about the, the facade of the building thank you that's correct thank you uh, and, and good point, I, I agree. It, it's, it's a meeting just to talk about changes on the inside. Um, and it's nice to know that there's another option. We never knew this was another option, but I think in this case here, when we've, when we've given the impression we're going for public meeting because of change, that we should be going for public meeting. So I'll, I'll be supporting the resolution. Can I just say one last thing? You look a great answer, sir. You're the chair. Let's, um, <laughs> in some ways, like, you know, we, we fought hard for this thing to to get staff to make a recommendation because uh, we didn't want to come here and uh, we did that and you know so staff recommended planning board recommended and here we are just keep in mind folks that we're here we're open for business and we're trying to do our best right it's times of COVID and here we are slowing down business I just it's got nothing to do with who the outcome is I really don't care but you know we have a follow process here and now we're going back again and it just seems like unnecessary but anyway, it's, 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 it's I'm the guy that's on all of its priority and yeah. making it perfect. And, and uh, we did. Yeah, I think you follow the process too. Yeah. We did follow the process. Okay. Yeah, but I think that this, this is a change with the public yeah. expects. Question? That's, that's Questions called. Questions called. Mm -hmm. I wish you could just go with See, Do you want to. Mr. Can you read it? You read it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All those in favor of the resolution. That's to go to public meeting. To go to the public consultation. Please put up your hand. To go to the public consultation, I have Councilor McCabe, Councilor Duran, Councilor Bernard. To go to the public consultation, Councilor Tweedle, yay or nay? To go to the public consultation, in favor. Okay, that's four. Those against going to the public consultation, please put up your hand. Against? No. You're four. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, that's going to make you go backwards again. Okay. Can I just re recall the vote again? I'm just trying to get a sense. <laughs> trying to get a sense. Can we just do it over again, please? All those in favor of going to the public consultation, please put up your hand. Deputy Mayor Cope, Councilor Bernard, Councilor McCabe, Councilor Duran, Councilor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. In favor. All those against. All those against. Against. Councillors Duffy, Ramsey, Councillor Yankov, and Councillor McLeod, five to four. So it goes to a public meeting. Right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Your Worship, moved by Councillor McLeod, <laughs> second by Councillor Cave, without the proposed drive through business. Oh, oh, Just one second. Oh, sorry. Councillor, Councillor Yankov has to leave, and Councillor Rivard can come back. Oh, welcome back there, Councillor Rivard. Got another cup of coffee. <laughs> Free coffee night. I'm sure we just. I got the whole pot right. <laughs> Do you want to read the resolution, sir? Yes, sure, sure. Moved by Councilor Cloud, sent by Councilor Cave. That's a proposed drive through business, Tim Horton, at 404 Mount Everett Road, PID 1007707, to be approved subject to the following. One, signing a development agreement. Two, providing 31 queuing spaces. Three, agree to the proposed upgrade to Mount Everett Road. And four, revise the site plan dated October 6, 2021, showing the 31 queuing spaces, Your Worship. I'll let uh, Alex speak on this one. Mr. Forbes, anything to add? Uh, just your worship. Uh, this is uh, again, uh, we had a similar application of this nature. There was a, a 
uh, traffic study done. Okay. Uh, there were changes that had to be made to accommodate some more viewing space up to 31. Uh, the applicant has provided it. The province has been consulted. Uh, and so the province is aware of the application and uh, agree that with the proposed changes, which are uh, will be a requirement of this application, uh, improvements to the left turning lane, which will have to be put in place by the applicant in the development agreement uh, to accommodate the additional volume that's uh, trying to make that left turning movement. So uh, Mr. Adams has reviewed it, the police have reviewed it, and the province has reviewed it, and are all are indicating that uh, they are in support uh, with a development agreement outlining the uh, the cost implications to the applicant for that left turning uh, movement as outlined in the traffic report. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship? Do you want to go first? Uh, we'll just, yeah. 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 So, and so, then Councilor Ramsey. Yeah. So just, so, just to make it clear, so all these queuing spaces are not on the street. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> show the difference. <laughs> so, um, I just want to clarify that and that the changes, like Ali said, is uh, being done by the, by the developer. Um, there might be some minor changes to the to, to the road itself, the amount of road that we might have to do, but, but all the left, you know, any all terminal traffic is being done by, by the developer. Thank you. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. Just location. I, I am trying to figure this one it's out. It's just it's north of the arterial highway. Next to me. Thank across, you. Across from Outriders. Up there, we're all the yeah. current yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Clear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Almost the industrial. Yeah. Question. 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 Okay. All of those in favor, please put up your hand. Mayor Cody, Councilor Bernard, McKay, Kelsey, Ramsey, Councilor Devon. And McLeod, Councillor Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Okay. Your Worship, so we'll wait till it changes up again, and the landing can come back in again. Can you ask Councillor? Number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. We're just waiting for Councillor Yankoff. Yankoff to come in. Councilor Yankoff, we're building the, uh, the short term rentals. Where we have a consultation. Moved by Councilor Cloud, second by Councilor Cave, that Council rescind its resolution of March 9, 2020, to proceed with scenario four, and that the proposed amendments as follows. Official, sorry, as follows. Official plan amendments pertaining to section 3.2, sustaining Charlottetown's neighborhoods, and section 4.5, supporting home occupations, and the zoning and development bylaw amendments pertaining to 516, secondary suites, 5.7 garden suites, 5.11 tourist accommodation on residential properties, section 43.1 parking space standards, and Appendix A definitions be approved to proceed to public consultation. Questions called. Questions called. Okay, and this is to go to a public consultation. Public consultation. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. Deputy Mayor, Cody, Councillors Bernard, Councillors Cape, Councillors Duffy, Ramsey, Councillor Duran, Councillors McLeod, Yankov, and Councilor Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Okay, nine zero. Hey, Mr. Forbes, do we have a date for that yet? Uh, the date, Your Worship, will be November 9th at the Confederation uh, Center of the Arts. And uh, we will be sending out uh, in the notice, there, there will be uh, COVID, uh, enhanced COVID requirements, but uh, it will give people lots of time to be able to register for so that meeting. tracking and tracing. Correct. You have to have your double vax card. Correct, correct, yeah. Okay, you have to wear a mask. Correct. Yeah, it's, I don't know about the mask, but at any rate, it's, it'll all, it's all will be outlined okay. in the notice to the public. Thank so you, sir. That's just, uh, uh, may I, um, yes, you can, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Ken. Um, is there any any uh, thoughts of staying at the Charlton Hotel? Um, I know the center is a big venue. Um, I'm just thinking the Charlton Hotel with the overflow room that will work just as well. I just. 
I don't let you, I just you, wanted you, to be you, your worship, uh, it, it, It's always, you know, for staff, it's kind of tricky as to who's going to show up. And so if you if you book too big of a room, it makes the group that show up look too small. And it's but if you book too small of a room and too many people show up, uh, because of people uh, that don't can't stand, if you you know, so in the interest of be, being safe, we we feel the Confederation Center is the best venue. Uh, you can uh, uh, stretch people out, and because of the changing nature of COVID, it's impacted this process, uh, you know, before, and so we're just being very, okay. I wouldn't say cautious, but that venue will hold a lot of people, and there's clearly no way that anybody will have to be turned away. And because of COVID, it will allow people to sort of sit in their own little groups or their little bubbles, uh, potentially inside the center. So we just feel that it's better safe than sorry if we go to the venue, maybe too big, but, but because it's such a COVID <coughs> issue, we feel that that's the best venue. Yeah, Good, question. Good question, sir. Good question. Thank you. Worship, second reading, if we Okay, just one second, please. I'd like Councilor Verd to probably have another cup of coffee. Do you need Okay, sir, do you want to read? So just to state for people online, number seven is being referred. Referred, 35 friends is referred back to the planning yeah. committee or planning board? Planning board. Can I, can I ask a question on that? On 35 Prince Street? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's off, you'll have to wait until it comes back the next time around. Mm -hmm. No, just, just a question on the process. Uh, process. With the process with 35 Prince Street that well, is just going back? I think it's important to, to I already know that the reason for the referral was simply to go back to the planning board. It didn't get the planning board. Yeah. So we're going back to make sure it gets the planning board because council should not be recommending anything or voting on anything that doesn't come from the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, you want to read the second? Is it second meeting, sir? Yes, sir. There's, um, there's three of them. Oh. Your Worship, whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw PH-D.2049 as pertains to a portion of the property at 88 Brafting Point Road, PID 396770, as attached, was read and approved a first time on September 13, 2021. Be resolved that the said bylaw be read as a second time and approved, uh, moved by Council Without and second by Council McCabe, and be further resolved that the bylaw be a Adopted. Again, move on Council Cloud, second by Council Pay. Shall it carry? Pass. Pass. Good. Council Tweed, yay or nay? In favor. Next one, sir. Your Worship, this is regards to zoning, such to adopt bylaw PHZD.2050, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to amend appendix C. Approve site-specific exemptions table to allow for a site-specific amendment to the institutional I zone in order to permit the construction of a 30-unit apartment development at Beach Road, uh, Road at PID 1131820, and it's be resolved that the said bylaw be read a second time, uh, moved by Council McLeod and second by Council Cave as it was read the first time on September 13th, and moved by Council McLeod and second by Council Cave that it, that the said bylaw be now adopted. Rachel. Shall it carry? Pass. Pass. Councilor Trio? In favor. Next one, sir. Your Worship, whereas the bylaw to amend the city of Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw, PHZD.2052, as it pertains to the property at 247 Royalty Road, PID 404632, as attached, was read and approved for the first time on September 13, 2021. Be resolved that the said bylaw be read a second time and approved by Casper Cloud, second by Casper Cave, and further that the, the said bylaw be adopted by Casper Cloud, second by Casper Cave. Okay. Shall it pass? Pass. pass? No. Okay. Contrary, please put up your hand. Uh, Councillors Duffy, Duran, Councillor Tweed, yay or nay? Um. A or an A? In favor.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is that it? That's it. Councilor McLeod, as always, thank you very much. Mr. Forbes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Definitely going in a new direction with the meeting on what? November 9th on the short term rentals. Okay. I believe economic development is next, and that's Councilor McKay. Thank you, Your Worship. The Economic Development Tourism and Event Management Committee did not meet since their last meeting at Council. The Arts Advisory Board met on the 24th of August and the 28th of September. Those open draft minutes are included in your package. To give you a little update, the Tourism and Event Management staff joined up with 100 Atlantic Canadian event professionals in Halifax last week at the <coughs> annual event Atlantic Summit. Our Tourism Officer, Laura Lee, participated in a panel discussion on Atlantic Canada event attraction models. Event Atlantic also had its inaugural event, Atlantic Excellence Awards, during the Event Atlantic Summit. Lots of events. Our Events Development Officer, Wayne Long, was named Champion of the Year, which is an award presented to an individual who embodies collaboration, dedication, and excellence in events management in Atlantic Canada. So let's give Joy and me. Well, 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 well. The Can Canadian Premier League, the Island Games, held in Charlottetown last summer, was also recognized by Events Atlantic as the event of the year for uh, events with a budget over $500,000. The city was also recognized last week by Communities in Bloom with the National Winter Life Award, recognizing efforts and involvement in projects and initi initiatives which engaged the community with indoor and outdoor activities excuse me, from November through March. So the city will be showcased on the cover of an upcoming issue of the Municipal World magazine. Staff are in the final stages of preparing for the Atlantic Mayor's Congress and Economic Micro Summit, which will be hosted here in Charlottetown next week at the Delta. The shoulder season events continue to prosper in Charlottetown with culinary events, including the Street Fest and Harbor Fest, seeing much success, lots of people. The Charlottetown Scarecrow Festival kicked off last weekend and has taken over the downtown core. And I must add, there is like Scarecrow in East Royalty. I was pretty excited to see that. So we've gotten, we've moved from out of town. Um, so it's going to add a little touch of whimsy, they say, to the fall. Uh, this will go on until the 24th of October. The PEI Marathon will also take to the streets this weekend. And we'd like to thank all city departments who helped make these events possible. Stakeholder interviews are to take place this week as part of the development of our new public art plan for Charlottetown. And I need to thank Mayor Brown and all of my fellow councillors for participating in this very important part of the consultation process. Any questions? I'll do my best for the staff will to answer. Well, congratulations, Wayne, Laura Lee. Great. Thank you. Very well done. Okay, can we move on? Easy now. I have a question. Oh. Councillor Tweel has a question. Councillor Tweel, they're ready. Thank you for your report, Councillor McKay. The uh, question I have is, is regarding the Shelton Christmas Parade. Last year we didn't have a full-fledged Christmas Parade, and I'm looking for a status report as to we're going to be going back to the tradition that was started back in 1997, 98, for the uh, full-fledged Christmas Parade. Uh, coming down University Avenue and into the downtown core, uh, can you update us as to uh, what what the what the status is and, and has any progress been made? Councilor McKay, as chair, do you want to yield that to the staff? I would say, Councilor Twilley, you're on the committee. We haven't discussed it yet, but maybe there okay. is an update from Laura Lee okay. that she wants to provide. Well, you're just trying to get new news. Okay. Your Worship, yes, we haven't had a chance to discuss it yet. Um, we did have an opportunity to meet with CPHO in person about two weeks ago now. Um, and we did receive word this morning that unfortunately we will not be able to proceed with the traditional parade. Um, they have recommended that we continue with the neighborhood tour that we developed last year as there's still um, some uncertainty around those kids under 12 uh, will be able to get their first vaccinations and there's not a great way to control vaccination status along the route. So that's the direction that we have been given. Better safe than sorry. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Laura Lee. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Councilor McKay. Thank you very much. Okay, next one is environment. That's a direct yep. Councilor Tweel, environment and sustainability. Thank you. Um, highlights for, for this, this monthly report 
is uh, transit ridership for September 2021 was 59,466 compared to September 2020 when ridership was 34,911. The city's transit system is currently maintaining 83% of its pre-pandemic ridership. Monthly ridership from high school participants in the student transit project was 221 this month. The city switch program provides zero percent interest financing to homeowners looking to make energy improvements on their home. The program, which operates in partnership with the town of Stratford, province of Prince Edward Island, and Wolfville, Nova Scotia, has now toppled over 1.18 million in homeowner upgrades since since its launch in July 2021. Currently, 45% of the participants are using the program to install solar panels, 39% to install heat pumps, 5% to install improved installation, and 11% on other energy upgrades. We continue to encourage residents to take advantage of this great program to support our community's green gas reduction goals and reduce the energy costs. The city is now the proud owner of two electrical vehicles, a Chevy Bolt and a Hyundai Kona. Uh, these vehicles are part of the city fleet, will be used for generate general operations as well as education for promotional initiatives. Next week, the city will be recognizing Waste Reduction Week in Canada. Residents can check out our website or social media pages to learn more about the promotions during this week intended to help residents to reduce waste. Uh, Reports in your packet, your worship. I'll do my best to answer any questions. And of course, our manager, Ramona Doyle, who uh, provided this report for myself, uh, these, these notes, uh, is here to answer questions as well. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Councilor yeah, Strong. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you for your uh, report, Councilor Tweel. I just noticed in your minutes there that um, in collaboration with the Public Works Department, you uh, spoke about uh, planting a number of trees through various parts of the community. I've been asking about trees uh, to, be, to be planted in, uh, on the highway there, on the bypass. There's a lot of residents that uh, have put up with a lot of noise over the years. And uh, I think I asked last year about the TD program, if there was a possibility of getting some trees on the bypass. And I know it's been canceled for this year. Um, could you could you please put it back on the uh, agenda to, to try to get some trees out in that area once again, if you don't mind? Thank you. No, no, no thank you for the recommendation, Councillor Duran. Uh, I know we're going to be planting some trees on, on the bypass, so uh, we'll certainly try to get the specifics from you and uh, work towards that, that aim. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Twill. Yeah. Uh, I know that Council Bernard and Deputy were out for the opening of the active transportation pathway. Is that what you were going to bring up, no, Council? No, 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 So you had a great launch on the opening of the pathway, active, transport act, active we, transportation pathway between, is it Merchants? We, 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 had, a, we had a great launch, uh, a lot of enthusiasm in the room, and uh, certainly speaks to uh, active transportation venues being constructed throughout the city of Charlottetown. Uh, I would say we're just uh, at the tip of the iceberg. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question for you, Councilor Field, but I just want to also comment on your on the uh, active transportation path. I'd also uh, like to reach out to the both staff of Environment and Public Works. Um, that's been a project that's been ongoing for some time, and it's great to see it come come full steam ahead. And yeah. uh, we got more to go, but uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in the past couple of years, that that project has been. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of work's been done on so appreciate all the uh, support there and uh, keep up the good work. Uh, Thank you. So on your question, uh, question for you is on your uh, bicycle helmet signage. Uh, um, I kind of asked about that at Public Works and, and one of the, one of the uh, stumbling blocks from the manager of Public Works is the fact that, well there's two things, one is it's a provincial law and number two is uh, there is, as part of Transport Canada, no helmet uh, signage that is available. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's, uh, that's what Scott Adams said, you'd have to 
he'd have to uh, go back to the to the actual Transport Canada uh, site to see if there is such a thing. But he didn't think there was, and that was one of our problems: is where do we go from there with, you know, uh, the jurisdiction wise? Who's going to enforce it? Like putting signs up is only as good as the sign that's made on it. Uh, you know, we got to have a plan going forward with enforcement. So I'd like you to look into that if you could, please. Thank you. No, I mean that, that's that's a that's a good point. Um, as you know, our, our chair of the Disabilities Committee, uh, Kenny Bernie, who's a good friend of mine, uh, Kenny's been uh, uh, very determined, uh, very dedicated, very diligent in his effort over the last number of years as president of the Brain Injury Association, and now as the responsibility as chair of the Disabilities Persons with Disabilities Committee. Uh, this is a recommendation that was brought forward uh, from that particular committee, uh, came to the Environment Sustainability, uh, maybe uh, due to the fact that there's not, you know, uh, universal uh, science across Canada, uh, maybe we can be the groundbreakers and uh, introduce uh, signage uh, of, of this particular uh, this particular nature. Uh, we do we do have our police uh, enforce uh, wearing helmets in the city of Charlottetown, and uh, signage uh, would, to my mind, be consistent with uh, our, our our bylaw. Uh, to encourage uh, cyclists to uh, to uh, when they're out riding their bike or they're out cycling, whether it's passive or being active, to, to, to wear a helmet. Uh, as you know, we still have people in our city that haven't gotten the message, and, and they're still riding their bikes without helmets. And, and Kenny is uh, looking for any instrument, any device, any uh, anything that would create that incentive and illustrate further how important it is to wear a helmet. So that's why we uh, discussed it at the Environment Sustainability Committee and made the recommendation to forward it on to the uh, Public Works Committee. Uh, it's, it's certainly something that should be examined and, and maybe we can be the groundbreakers here in the city of Charlottetown. Thank you. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, uh, Councilor Twill, I'm just going to make some comment on the active transportation trail too. Um, obviously it's good news, everybody's quite pleased about it. Um, and I should thank Council. I know, I know this came through a few years ago, and uh, we had Minister Jameson, who should get the credit here too, because uh, we had asked her for 50% of the funding to do the phase from Murchison Lane to St. Peter's Road, uh, which uh, I guess Stephen Myers or Minister Myers was the Minister of Transportation at the time, and so between the two of them, they got the funding and was able to go ahead. So kudos to them. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but John Andrews was the one who designed this trail we're putting in from Mercer Lane to go down to uh, Madden Road. So, so phase one is done now. We passed the resolution last month to start phase two. Yeah. To go down uh, Melbourne Road and then go to the bypass to Madden Road. Uh, from Madden Road, or, I'm sorry, Bracket Point Road. From Bracket Point Road to Madden Road, hopefully we can do that in phase two. Because uh, oh. it's already in phase one, yeah. Madden Road pathway down. Yeah. Um, that hooks on to the Confederation Trail, which is, as everybody knows, takes you right in town, and that takes you <coughs> back. And so there's a lot of connections. Uh, but I think uh, John Andrews deserves a little bit of credit because we put this thing together about five years ago. I remember coming to Ramona, and I think Ramona still has it in the profile. So uh, very thank you to the minister and, and uh, John Andrews. Okay. Very positive. Thank you. Okay, good. Did you? I did see. Do you want to make a comment? Please, um, please. Um, <laughs> Council Bernard kind of beat me to it about um, just to build on what he had said. Kudos to him as council in the area who was certainly um, worked pretty diligently on this project as well. So, thank you. And it's it's going right up the mountain of the road, so it's beautiful. It's going to be nice. So, thank you, Council Tweel. Well, okay, strategic. Uh, no, priorities. Am I ahead there? And finance or something. Oh, finance. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, no. 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 Strategic priorities. Yeah. Okay. I see it right here, sir. Okay. I have a finance. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you question the chair anytime. <laughs> Strategic priorities in your government cooperation committee did not meet last month. There's a notice of motion. This is to renew the notice of motion to amend the procedure by law at the next regular council. Any questions? No, but Council Ramsey, I just want to say one thing. 
Yes, sir. This was really good news to new PEI to start the process to open a new medical school. Yes, we are here. And the you. resolution came from this council. So I was at the announcement last Friday, and there were approximately 150 uh, participants, all positive. They plan to expand the uh, uh, School of Nursing. So it's really good news for the city. And in the same paper, EI changes, again, supported by this council, I believe through strategic priorities. It's now one system right across the country. Yep. So everything we've been pushing for is coming to fruition. And as you know, that's, your worship with that's the medical school. That's in action. And as you know, your worship at the medical school, we met, I think you were here at Councilor Yankee? No. There's yourself and I in the. Councilor Tweel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Councilor yeah. Tweel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you and I were all here. Yeah. And it was a closed session. And we're very pleased to went ahead with the announcement, which was fantastic news that day. Great. They're so excited. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No questions? What, what's the procedural bylaw? What's the amendment? You have that, uh, Councillor? Just, just, just a renewal because you have to have uh, a one month notice. Uh, a motion. It's just a renewal. Yeah. Yes. Did you hear that, Councillor Trio? Just a renewal? <coughs> You're going to bring up what, what does a renewal consist of? It'll be brought back at the next meeting, Worship. It's just uh, the notice of motion that there is a uh, there is amendments coming forward. Okay. So, Councillor Twigg, you're on the committee, right? Yeah, I just wanted to find okay. out what they were. Finance, audit. Thank you, sir. Councillor Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Our uh, committee met, and the report is in your package. Um, there's no resolutions this month through finance, um, mm -hmm. but there is a set of uh, reading papers attached. And also the uh, financial statements were emailed out there this morning, late this morning, and a, and a paper copy is placed on everyone's desk for, for them to review. Your Worship, if there's any questions, I'll give uh, them the best answer. And we have the Acting Manager of Finance, Nancy McRae here. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Thank you, Councillor Tweel. Just a couple of questions. Um, a couple of months ago, Deputy Mayor Cody, I brought up the, the issue of uh, emergency funding and, and how that, uh, how that uh, funding uh, uh, functions. Um, what, what's the process? What does it consist of? Who makes the decision when it comes to emergency funding with regards to uh, the various departments within the city's corporation? That's my first question, sir. Uh, thank you, Councilor. Well, we didn't discuss that at our, at our committee, but um, I'll have to get you an answer here from either the uh, the manager or staff or staff. Yeah. Second question, there, Councilor Twill. Yes. So the second question is is regarding the uh, the issue with uh, Enterprise PEI and the uh, PEI Automobiles Association and their uh, further inquiry as to uh, what the intentions are of the city. As you know, a resolution was passed by, by City Council. I think it was a 4-3 vote. And then I believe there was an intention by some members of Council, I'm, I'm not sure of the particulars, uh, to rescind that resolution. And I was wondering, sir, if you can give me a progress report. That's not Enterprise Pete. Yeah, that's Enterprise Fleet uh, Management. Yeah, right? But yeah. that's so, for public purchase, yeah. No, no, I was supposed to back to finance. Yeah, and, and we did add it to the agenda, Councilor Tweel, at our last meeting, and the agenda was full and we didn't get to it. So it'll be back on the agenda for our next meeting. Okay. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Yankov, she's like this. <laughs> hey, did you not see me raise my hand? Thank Councilor you. Yankov. Thank you, Councilor I'm just, just for clarification, the borrowing bylaw, I see that it's a draft. So this is a brand new bylaw, or is this a um, changes to an existing? The old one's getting repealed from 2012, and that was emailed out uh, the end of September from, I believe, a staff person here at City Hall to, to review. So it just didn't comply with the new MGA requirements. Right. Yeah. So just a follow up. Yeah. Can we do what, we, what we've been asking staff to do? And when this comes back in, in the next step, in a non draft, 
the comparisons of, of what we're what's replacing all in the same document the, the old one's being repealed so oh so it's just gone it's, it's gone. gone yeah okay so we don't have any choice there are not too many big changes, other Nancy, to it in the appeal. Repeal well, certainly in the presentation, because the last one from 2012 was a 32-page document that actually included a TD loan agreement, which was very peculiar. Um, so this one is more streamlined, uh, and it's more it follows the, uh, the the guidelines that we need to adhere to. Councilor, did you have a question? Uh, I just wondered, um, and that's the council trail that they to it. Um, I know there's a lot of things in the finance committee that would be closed session, but there's obviously a lot of stuff that's being talked about that's not closed session. I'm wondering why we, 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 whenever there's a closed session, do we not put on the agenda what's being talked about, even though it's behind a closed session? And if not, it'd be nice because of all 10 elected officials here, nobody knows what's going on in finance at all. Nobody knows what's talking about. They just you open it up and says, we went to section 119, and everything's closed. There's no information on that. And it, it, the enterprise fleet management is a good example. Public works can talk about it in the open session. I'm not sure why finance can. Yeah. But that's just an example. There's got to be some things there that, that are consistent. At the end of what, what the topic doesn't. If it's a closed session, then so be it. It's a closed session. Deputy, do you want to address that, or Nancy, what's, what's your response? To put an agenda in for a closed session? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can have that. Yeah. I mean, because I think we do it for Parks and Recreation. Yeah. We do it for all the other... <coughs> yeah, it's a closed session. Well, that's... Have a question to ask. Uh, I, I know no, Mr. Kelly attends the meetings. Is, is that in the MGA, Mr. Yeah. Kelly, to put it in there? Yeah, so you, you are supposed to know when you go into closed <laughs> and session under what a section A through H, and so which is quite end noted. At times it's not very specific, but it is under the category. If council wants more specificity, we can put that in your show. I think the council of Bernard is asking for just items discussed. Correct? Yeah, I mean, if the closed session, we'll have them in parks tonight too, but it's listed as yeah. what we're going to be talking about. That's fine. Yeah. Good. I, I have a question. Another one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Council Barry, are you referring to the, uh, the resolution that was passed by Council on the 4 3 vote regarding the, the awarding of the tender to to Enterprise PEI? Is that, is that the topic you're talking about? No. No. I'm just talking about any topic in general. There's, there's nothing listed in the agenda of what finance is discussing. Oh. So, the council has no idea what they're talking about from meeting to meeting. He's just talking about more open <coughs> <this> transparency <coughs> and accountability. It's just what's being discussed has on the agenda. It's, it's totally okay, fine. that's fine. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's it, uh, Debbie. So, we have a second reading. Yeah. You want to read the, the second reading? Your Worship. Uh, to repeal the City of Charlottetown 2012 Boring Bylaw, which was approved and adopted May 23rd, 2012. This boring bylaw uh, uh, number 2021-BB01 <laughs> applies to the boring of money for capital expenditures and or to finance operating expenditures on a short-term basis. Be it resolved uh, that the City of Shelltown Boring Bylaw 2021-BB01 be read a second time approved uh, and that the said bylaw be now adopted by Councilor for Sorry, Captain Mayor Cody and a second by Councilor Burke. Shall I carry? Yes. Thanks, sir. Council Twig here today. In favor. Okay, that's it, sir. Yes. Thank you. Next report, I believe, is human resources, communications, and administration. And the manager's here, Beth McCosley. Do you have anything to add to it here? Councilor Yanko? Yep. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, just that with that, um, on October 5th, um, the minutes are in the package. We do not have any resolutions. I anticipate we will have a few next month. And if anyone has any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Oh, oh lots of questions. And you're here tonight. Just great. It's like, yeah, no, I said no. <laughs> we missed you last month, so she's Thank here you. this month. Councilor Ramsey, then Councilor Duff. Is that all right? Thank you, Councilor Yankee, Councilor Hickoff. Uh, just to comment, uh, when Councilor Nerd said, we're finance, but things going in closed session, should this 
could this not go with this thing of which is going to be discussed or say chair off the charts it's for all committees yeah. from what i understand yeah good is that all for everybody then? yes excellent thank you mm -hmm. councillor duffy thank you your worship thank you uh thank you uh councillor uh, last last month, I believe it was Councilor Jerome put a question to someone in regard to the mic system in this room here and the mic system throughout the building. And I think Councilor Jerome was left with the impression, the wrong impression, I think, uh, that uh, the way it was placed, the answer to his question, the way it was placed that uh, most people would think that the $150,000 that's now being spent to upgrade the system is the same $150,000 that we started out with about two and a half years ago. So at the end of the meeting, or the answer the, the answer that went to Councilor Jerome at the end of it was $300,000 is being spent. Another $150,000 is being spent to that long standing funding of $150,000 for a total so far of $300,000. And that seemed like a lot of money. To, to be communicating from these these systems, and as it turns out, or explained to me by Mr. Chaisson, that the this is the same hundred and fifty thousand dollars, correct? And it's only a hundred and fifty thousand dollars because some people have said to me, "Gee, that seems like an awful lot of money," and I don't know the first darn thing about it. So all I am is the conduit for the whole thing. So yeah, is is it right? We're only spending one hundred and fifty thousand on system, and it's not the system. Upgrade. Make the system much better. Exactly. Oh, definitely. Will be. But and Councilor Draw, I think you were, left with, you were left with the opinion it was three hundred thousand. And it. And, yep. and, and, and my and coming to me, I'll defer that too. Yeah. Thank you. So it, it's upgrades for here and for the yes. other other meeting space. That yes, but it's one hundred and fifty, not three hundred. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Councilor Draw, do you want to respond to that? Thank you. Yeah. So we'll go back. I don't know how many years where we we got. Or we received new new computers here, and then it was the whole wiring through the building, and then there was more over that side, and and so you can't tell me for all the resolutions that we passed in total of trying to upgrade, it's only 150. Is that is that the case? We'll get to the information council. I understand it is within the budgetary that council had approved. Um, COVID rules had changed things for all of us, and so we had to change that con uh, that configuration on a couple of occasions. But sure. we will do a report for you, or you for, uh, for for council. Thank you. And council drawn, it's all about making the system better. It is. <laughs> Just want to make sure you're. <laughs> you know, you're okay, you know, say that with a straight face. So really, making the system better. We've been here three years, and we haven't even been able to use these things. No, we were using them prep. Pre uh, previous to COVID-19. COVID-19. Yes. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. Okay. We, we, so we can't use 2021. Yeah, no, but so the how many years ago have we not even turned them on? Be because we have to realign all the outlets so that you can use them, which would be an additional cost. So that's why we're still in COVID-19 uh, protocol to ensure that you're six feet apart and we're safe and we're providing safe, a safe place for people to do business here at City Hall. Pretty simple. It sounds pretty simple, but it's just it's just frustrating. Look, you know, some councils are not meeting. They're still doing uh, uh, web uh, webcast meetings, webex meetings. They haven't come. Some of them are not back in their chambers yet. Not here. No, but it's elsewhere in the country. Canada, yeah. somewhere. Yes. Okay. So we've taken the precautions, and we've been quite open right from the beginning. Business as usual. I think that's pretty good for a council. That's going through the pandemic. Thank you. Just follow up your, your, your question. question. When I come in tonight, yes, with my mask on and everything, uh, our young lady downstairs said, "Council got to sign in now for for council meetings." And she was told that by the commissioner. I don't know if that's under HR or that's under public so. works or what it is. So, I want to. So that would be for contact tra uh, tracing counselor uh, and anybody else coming in other than council and staff also have to show that they're double back. No, she told me to sign in. Yep. It's for contact. So we, so as council, from here on in, do we have to sign in when we're coming to council meetings? We're trying to follow provincial protocols, council. Yeah. No, I, I know, but I just asked the question. Yeah. Is it a yes or no? Yeah. As far yes. as no, that is. Is this the first time it happened? Yeah. Because of the new protocols, you have to show your double double vax. Uh, Did anyone else sign in, or is it just me? No. 
No, that's not correct, Your Worship. Go ahead. He's asking a totally different question. Yes. And when I came in tonight, I did not have to sign for contact tracing. So as as the as as the counselors that come here every single month, it would be it was fine. Place. I would be happy to sign in, but I never yet ever get to sign in. For <coughs> we discussed this at human human resources. This is not about vast passes. No, 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 it's no, no, it's no it's but, totally but, different. but <laughs> residents coming in have to show yes, their double vax. That's not his question. No, I no, no that. my question was counsel. And did you show your no, double vax pass? The front desk by the young lady, and she said, oh, the commissioner said the council got to sign in for the meeting. I said, what? Are you, are you kidding me? She okay. said, no. So I, I signed it up. We so I, I don't know where, where it is. If, we're, if, if, if we're having a meeting, do we, do we as council, which we didn't for two years, we'll sign get, in? Now all of a sudden we're signing we'll in. We'll get back to your counselor. It's either yes or no. It's new ground every week. So we'll check into it again. Yeah, but I was going to sign in, so it must be over. <laughs> they want your name. Well, the purpose of the contract to contact tracing is who was there when a sick person was there, and just look at the tape of the of the meeting. You see, you don't have to sign in. You're so, here, and you're on the tape, and you're speaking. So we'll go back and check why that happened. Come well, I'll put it in that the person didn't you know the facts. Oh no, she knew. It's she knew. It's the same girl from now. Same <coughs> same so we'll we'll, then, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll go back here. Yeah, Thank you, Bethany. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have a question? Or, oh, wait, no, Bethany, you got a question. <laughs> Go ahead. It's time to read the question. Just a comment. I see under the, uh, thank you very much for your report, Councilor Nico. Um, communication report there, I mentioned Isaac being back, so uh, just want to take a shout out to Isaac. Thank you for coming back. And uh, and also a shout out to Doug DeMay, too, because Doug really helped the board down. Uh, thank you, Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But so we got both really held the fort down and, and I'm sure Peter knows that, but yeah, a shout out to both these gentlemen for doing great work and, and looking forward to the communication piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Welcome back. Thank you, Bethany. Okay. Protective and emergency services. Council Revival. You're finally here. Thank you, Worship. I have another copy. Councilor Dallas, funny. Thanks for coming back here to you. Over here. I was afraid you let him know he wasn't back. Go ahead. Uh, all right, Councilor Grant here. Protective Emergency <laughs> Services Committee. We met on September 28, 2021. Minutes are in your package as usual. Uh, no resolutions uh, for tonight. But you will notice uh, that uh, new Chief uh, McConnell uh, and staff uh, provided. Uh, new statistical information in your packages. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Um, I guess, you know, once the council had a, has had a chance to review, look at it, um, you know, we certainly like some feedback, whether or not this is, uh, you know, good information um, and helpful information, or if it should be done in a different way, but uh, any feedback would be, uh, would be appreciated. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Councilor Bill. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Councilor Rivera, for your, your uh, report. Uh, Councilor Rivera, as you know, I've been trying for 13 months to get a particular property cleaned up uh, in the city of Charlottetown. I brought it to the community a couple of times. It's on University Avenue. We have great plans for University Avenue with uh, improving the surrounding area and, and make it truly a, a, a very close entry to the city. The particular property in the case is uh, uh, 282 and 284 University Avenue. I've, uh, our bylaw enforcement officer and our fire inspector have been up a couple of times and carried out uh, inspections of the property. But each time they go up, what appears to me, under, operating under the dangerous hazardous and unsightly premises bylaw, it seems when they go up, they, they concentrate on the security of the building and the dangerous factor and the hazard that you know people would have being in and around that building. But they're missing the unsightly factor, which is the factor that I want to address due to be, it being an entrance into the city. Uh, and it's been going on for 13 months. I get questions all the time about it. I get complaints about it all the time. So in a frustration, I go to the bylaw to read what I can do to remedy, remedy this for once and for all and get some action. So when I went to the, the, zone, the uh, dangers and hazards and unsightly premises bylaw, I know in the unsightly area, it states, where a property or a building, building has been secured pursuant to section 5.6A for more than 18 months, it may be referred to council and council may order it, it to be repaired or demolished in accordance with part 
uh, six of the bylaw. In other words, uh, this building did did suffer a fire back in March 11 of 2017. So that's what four four and a half years ago. It well exceeds the 18 month. All I'm looking for is to clean the place up and, and present it, it to make it presentable to not, not only residents but visitors coming into our city. I've asked through the committee to address it. It hasn't made it on here to council. So I guess to some people it doesn't seem important. I don't believe that, but it may seem that. that they, but what I'm here tonight to say is, okay, if you're not going to clean it up and fix it up in spite of what we're tr trying to do with our, our entryway, at least for the people who have asked me, and these are, these are business people and, and residents in the particular ward, for, I'm starting to almost have to cross the street when I meet them because there's been nothing done in 13 months. So what, what I'm saying is, well, maybe this would be the way to do it. As it says, council, after 18 months, can make a decision whether to, to clean it up or demolish it. So I'm asking you as the chair, would you please, and I sit on your committee, I realize that, and you know I brought it up a couple of times, could, could you put it on your next agenda? I know it's getting late into the year, this will be the second fall we miss, so to speak, cleaning it up. But something has to be done way or the, one way or the other, or the general public has to be let know that council has decided no, they're not doing anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will th thank you, Councilor Duffy. Yes. Um, yeah. We'll absolutely add to the next yeah. next committee meeting and, uh, and have a recommendation to Council from that. Okay. Any other questions, Councilor? Go ahead, sir. Um, I assume it's, it's, it's the same service. I, I just have to make a comment on this, this, this new neighborhood policing that we started three or four months ago. What an impact it's made. Um, never seen so many police cars, never seen so many people stop and through the neighborhoods. Uh, so I uh, just want to pass on thank you to the staff uh, and whoever came up with this plan with neighborhood policing. I know for myself, I can talk a little more again. It's, it's made an a, a amazing difference to see, uh, like I say, it's, it's, at one time, you should wonder if police cars were even going through the neighborhood. Now, uh, everybody's got to be pretty careful. Got to make sure you stop, stop time, and you the speed, and that, that's the more. So, thank you. I want to pass it on to the staff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bernard. I'll certainly pass it along. Um, I know staff believe this is a good, this is a good idea for the city. Um, one, one, of the, one of the parts that we miss out a lot is the fact that, you know, they pull the cars over sometimes, and they engage with the public. Not not in a not in a in a slow down speeding kind of way. They just they just engage with the general public. Those pass by, they'll pull over and and uh, you know gives the the residents of Charlottetown just that sense of ownership, belonging, whatever. That the police are not just there to to hand up tickets. They're there to just kind of engage and they're one of us. But well, police presence is definitely police presence. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Burt. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief on the phone there, Brad McConnell. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I just left. Thank you. No, he saw there. I didn't know that. Okay. Councilor Advisory Committee. Got some recommendations. Thank you, Your Worship. Council Advisory Committee met on October the 7th. The open draft minutes are included in your package. And I should comment that. Um, we will have to do the same thing that was asked to finance and include at least an agenda of our closed um, sessions as well. In that, there you'll, you'll have, we'll have notes in your package that we have two resolutions for council's consideration. One is for the uh, recommendation for the Arts and Culture Advisory Board, two potential um, new members for that, as well as two potential new members for the Mayor's Task Force. So if I all have any questions, I will do my best to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? There's also a call out for a planning board member, too. You're going to be doing that? That has to go through the, the call out first. So there's no resolution. No, I know that. But that's put in the cart before the horse. No, no, no. But that will be, that will be <laughs> shouted out. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Councilor Fire. Just for the sake of mention, the city board of personal disabilities as well. There'll be a call out for a new member there. Another yeah, another. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, We're just excited about being part of the process. 
two resolutions. Mr. Bishop, moved by Councilor Yankel, I'll tell you what, Councilor, Councilor Duffy, that the following appointments to the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board be approved effective immediately. Carol Horn, Nadine Haddad, Mr. Bishop. Questions called. Questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor Tweedle, yay or nay? In favor. Okay, 10 0. Your Worship, moved by Councilor Yankoff, say by Councilor Duffy, that the following appointments to the Mayor's Task Force on Active Transportation be approved effective immediately. Sharon McCurney and Richard uh, uh, Riseball. Your Worship. Questions called. Questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. 10 0. And that's it, uh, Councillor Yankov. Yes, thank you. Thank you kindly. Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Going on here, guys. Thank you, Worship. Uh, your Worship, Parks and Recreation activities being met on October 4th. A copy of the draft in your package. Um, this is just, I want to give some further information on the minutes that are in the package. Um, the applications for Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, we call ICIP funding applications, uh, namely the Victoria Park Shoreline Protection Project and the new outdoor multi-purpose facility in the West Road they have uh, not received approvals yet. Uh, with the call for the federal election, all funding applications were placed on hold, which uh, delayed project decisions and announcements. So we're told that, uh, that we're hoping to hear announcements uh, from those applications by uh, middle of November. Good. Which they have to announce the cabinet. And yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank the minister. Yeah, so those were, were obviously as, as an area that's the most important. So, Your Worship, we're hopeful to receive uh, positive news for this project soon so we can move forward with our um, Also, as you were aware, the new Sims Arena replacement project is in the final design stage. Uh, we have asked the consultants to revise the interior plans to move the walking track uh, up to the second level. Uh, this obviously required quite a bit of engineering to reconfigure, requiring more time, and I understand that we're very close to completion of the plans. Um, your Worship, in the minutes there, uh, page three, uh, under the outdoor multi sport facilities, West some West discussion West. about the pop boards that, that you brought up. Um, so, so uh, I guess you record in the minutes here as saying that all the puck boards in Eastland Centre were discarded and no one can even came to the Eastland Centre. Mm -hmm. We know that, that that's not the case. No, they were there, there was communication. There was puck boards saved and the metal that, that holds the board up uh, was all uh, that had to be discarded but that was taken to uh, scrap metal and, and yes. money into the uh, capital budget. Yeah. So, um, but nothing was salvaged. We, we didn't get any 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 materials. Everything was sold off by the contractor, I believe, right? Every, everything that was salvageable was, was sold. Yeah. Yeah. Puck board, the puck board that was salvageable was sold also, what, what they could sell. Um, and Your Worship, just to follow up with the project, Mulberry Park parking lot recently completed, uh, prior to the completion date of the 2015. Uh, the Centennial Park pathway was recently completed, Your Worship. And that, that had a completion date of October 30th. Both those projects were, uh, they came in over budget, but uh, we had moved some money around the budget to make them happen. It was year two or year three, whatever, so we want to get them completed. So they're both done. Um, just so people know, um, it's been a year since we all took over our chairmanship. and. Uh, Last year, it's been interesting to talk to a number of different groups. But just so everybody's aware, we're not looking for any money or anything right now. But uh, this, just so you know, the city of Charlottetown right now, with, with infrastructure requirements for sport organizations, um, we know now that we're uh, two soccer fields below what we need. And that's for the Sherwood Park Hill Rangers. Uh, West Road and Charlottetown Soccer is looking for, uh, has a need for a, a, a mini soccer field. Um, Rugby doesn't have a permanent home, so there will be need for a couple of rugby fields and a clubhouse for them. Uh, baseball PEI has contacted me. Uh, we are two, they say minimum, two ball fields short now. Um, and with registrations continuing to increase, it will be very long before we're going to be four ball diamonds short. Um, we don't have any pickleball courts. 
We don't have a cricket field. No. We don't have any beach volleyball courts. So you are worse. The city of Charlotte has some work to do. Uh, this is not only just for sport organizations, but this is also for attracting events to the city of Charlotte. Have. So uh, slowly but surely we've been falling behind on our needs, so we're going to have to at some point to start up. And I realize some of that land, finding the available land to do these things. Uh, so we do have some suggestions on land. And let us know. I know staff is out uh, looking for this, where some of these facilities can be built. So I'll just bring this up to let everybody know that uh, we are short. Our infrastructure is not up to where it should be. Uh, so if you have any suggestions on land that we're not thinking of, then let us know. This is some of the things that you know, we'll be talking about in the budget. I just want to make sure we knew every time off the door that we do have some needs. Um, The worst of the last thing, last update, uh, our seniors engagement committee had been working diligently preparing for a series of engagement workshops to obtain valuable feedback from our senior population force. And this is for um, ways the city can improve the quality of life for our senior population by creating a strategy for an age-friendly community. So your worship there'll be three workshops. Uh, the dates and times are set. Pre-registration will be required. Uh, the first workshop session is scheduled for Monday, November the 1st, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Malcolm Derrissard in East Rome. The next session will be Wednesday, November the 3rd, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the West Rome Community Center. And the third and final session will be Thursday, November the 4th, at 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. at Jack Blanchard Hall next to the Holy Redeemer. So you see, they've even got the dates, they've even got the times, so that hopefully it works out for everybody, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's mid-afternoon, or whether it's the evening. Um, in addition to these person sessions, feedback will also be accepted via online survey or hard copy surveys, which can be available here at City Hall for those interested. So your worship, they've been working pretty hard on getting this set up. Um, so, uh, they are asking staff too to also get the word out. Uh, they have volume been 18 hires, uh, so volume being people will be uh, putting on meetings. Uh, we do have some uh, comms and, and some advertising that's going to be on them. But anyway, it's, it's certainly great for the city of Charlottetown to be, be going this way and get some feedback uh, to put a strategy together for the age friendly community. Um, other than that, worst, uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions. Any questions? Can I go with Councillor Reverd, Councillor Genka, Councillor McLeod on this side? Councillor Reverd. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Brown, for your report. Um, the outdoor multi sport facility at West Royalty's Community Center, um, can you provide uh, Council and just with an update where we're at with that? Do you mind? <clears throat> oh, I just, I, I, I just did. <laughs> um, so you want some background of where we were? I, I guess, Councilor, sorry, Councilor, maybe I'll just, instead of just asking such a broad question. Um, you know, we had, we had passed in the capital budget, of course, the, the monies to move forward with the plan. Um, the residents of the area were informed back uh, in the spring um, that we were bringing this forward this fall. And uh, I, know, I know that there's, I've heard from, from a number of residents that were quite excited about the about this facility being built on the West Road Community Center uh, grounds. <clears throat> so, you know, the summer's passed, um, and then, you know, we're in the 11th hour, you know, nothing's happening, of course, so people are starting to call, start to ask questions just on the streets, whatever it may be, uh, with regards to, you know, when we're going to start. Uh, my understanding is, is that uh, we have an application to ACOA. Uh, ACOA has said, you know, the end of the month before they get, uh, before they get an answer to us. <clears throat> and I guess, you know, I, See a lot of other work happening, and I'm just curious why, you know, this this project wasn't, you know, be, um, something really pushed to have done, and uh, you know, started at least. Now, now we're looking at, you know, probably starting this in the spring, which kind of you, you, you lose a winter, and that's just again, I just need an answer. I'm trying to provide my residence, yep. and, yep. and, and it, along with I guess Jason, uh, Councilor Cody's residence, just an answer. Um, you know, why wasn't this pushed a little harder? Um, yeah, I don't need lectures. Yeah, 
<laughs> and I think I, I think you'll find that this year and last year, Councilor, um, there's been a number of projects that we've announced, and, and I mean, just last month there was the issue of Harley Street, and a number of projects that were approved in the budget, um, whether it's uh, the price that come in, or what have you, or there's just been different reasons in the last couple of years why projects haven't been on the door, on the, on the uh, docket to get done. Uh, this one was pushed through from the get-go. Tenants were out, they came in $100,000 over budget. Um, so, when you budget $200,000, they came in, I think, three out three. Uh, so we went to the province to see if we could get the funding from the province. Um, the province had, had a fund that they thought they could give us some money out of. Watched as much as they first told us. That's where we had talked to the service group. Uh, again, we wouldn't have had enough money. But then they put us on to the call funding that uh, met all the criteria for this for this outdoor facility, uh, up to 50% funding. So the 300,000 would cost the city 150,000. So that's the approval we were waiting on. Um, and then the elections call. So we're still waiting. <coughs> that's one of the uh, I said funding that we're waiting to hear on that and before your parks are on. So uh, the tenders have been out. They come back over budget. Um, Problems, uh, like I said, gave us this year particular fund that met all the criteria, so we applied, and we're waiting here to wait. So that that took from after the budget was passed, ten of documents were done, there was a budget, we went to the province looking for more money, uh, and then the province got us on set of funds for waiting here, wait here we're done. Follow up question, sir. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Bernard, for the explanation. So let's assume that a code comes back and there's and there's no money available. I mean, and there's what? There's no money available. Okay. Let's just assume there's no grant money. So you know, I guess you know, was there an opportunity for Council maybe to review to add the additional hundred thousand dollars of that's that went over budget in order to start the projects this year, as opposed to because my fear is that if the code does come back and they don't have the funds, then then we're going to be back in the same position that maybe we could have had it done back in July, which is basically asking council for the additional monies to, <coughs> yeah, to pay for the pay for the rent and get the work started and have it done for the fall. Well, I'm missing it. Actually, I've any project that, that, that mm -hmm. hasn't been done. I mean, I, I could probably list five projects that were over budget that never could done. Uh, we try and pursue like the look at Centennial Park from Mulder. They're both over budget. We move money around within the budget to get them get them done. Do we have hundred thousand dollars to move? No. Um, do you run rate the finance and ask for hundred thousand dollars? Probably put it. I mean there's all kinds of other projects and people are going to be asking, well why that one? And not these other projects. So we felt it built into go to the problems and see if they had funding. And it looked like yes they did. So um, but the fund that we when we first talked to them didn't have the amount left in it that we needed. So then the administrator got us on this new fund, met all the criteria. Uh, the manager took it from there, did the application in. We were hoping to hear a word uh, end of August. Uh, but anyway, uh, the election to call in September and don't even know. But all I can tell you is it met all the criteria. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty hopeful that it will get, will get approved. If it doesn't, it's really too late to start anyway. As of a month ago or, or six weeks ago, it was too late anyway. So, um, if it doesn't get approved, then it becomes part of the budget consultation for uh, 2022. And uh, so I suspect, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, I suspect that uh, when we got our prices earlier in the year, when lumber was through the roof, now lumber has come down. So the prices will probably be more favorable than the $300,000. Uh, that is possibly, possibly a worship, but we would have to go to retender next year to see if that is the case. So, Your Worship, this, I just want to clarify this project just, is. Finish up, just stand up and yeah. ask your question. So, just to clarify, I mean, yeah. thank you, Councilor Barrett, again. I, I see lots of times that we're over budget this year so far. We've approved it, we've approved it, we've approved it. And this one, um, it just it just doesn't seem like a priority. That's a little disappointed, that's all. Um, so, this project. No, I, 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 no, I think no, it's a priority. Yeah, just, just finish yeah, up. Yeah, but, but there's lots of projects that came back that were over budget that we just approved in this, in this room. Mm -hmm. That, that didn't require, maybe there's funding opportunities, but we approved them. I guess my point, I just I just want to say, you know, on behalf of the residents, I guess, that we're just disappointed that this project's not going this fall. Um, and I guess that's my last question is, is, are we certain that it's not happening? So even if we do get approval from ACOA, because I did talk to the, uh, 
the minister, uh, Sean Casey, and I did ask him to reach out to a phone to see if he could put, uh, get an answer for us quicker than not, and he is looking into it. Um, so if, if we do get the approval, are we saying we're still too late to, to start this project and complete this all? Uh, Your Worship and Council, the contractor indicated they would not be able to do the work to begin to be able to begin the work on the project this fall due to subcontractors being both subcontractors being booked fully for the remainder of the fall season. Okay. And and part of that is as well as a uh, asphalt surface, so asphalt can only be poured up until pushing into November. So you have to realize the timelines around that. So we're into middle of October now. Okay. Uh, just just to add, I mean, uh, but do you have your answer? I, I do. I do. I guess that the uh, I like Hester and I go. I just want to say one more quick thing. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor. The only thing I want to add is, uh, you know, to say what's the priority. Well, that's the, that's like saying the Victoria Park shoreline protection is not a priority. That's probably the most important project, and that's protecting Victoria Park. And we already know what we know what happened last year with the ice and the flooding and moved everything. So we're trying to get that project. Um, yeah. We're waiting for money. Is that a priority? Yeah, sorry, yeah. What's the price tag of those versus? Well, they're both, they're both, both ISIP uh, applications. Mm -hmm. They both met the criteria. We're waiting to hear a word. I mean, if you want to say the same thing, you know, you want, you want council to not bother applying for the money and just pay for it themselves. So you can ask council to do that. Or we would raise taxes pretty, pretty soon. But, you know, I want to solve the project. That's the only two I can think of that I've done. Yeah, yeah so is, can we can we do some kind of statement or public or, or, or something to the residents of the area just to let them know that this that this isn't going as opposed to because I I, I did notify my residents based on what we passed in in the budget that we would we would be fulfilling this mm -hmm. uh, this project and they're excited so you know it'd be nice to be able to. I mean, I could do another newsletter saying no. Um, I just wonder if there's a way we can do that. I I would think that the project is still going ahead. Yeah. No, I'm talking it's about this fall. You know, no, I understand that, but okay. I mean, I guess maybe just okay. to. That's delayed. That's well, No, no, I know it's going ahead. In case it's you guys look at it. Okay. Is that, I'm just wondering if it's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Yankov, question? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Well, um, now it just doesn't seem as. Morton is, I thought it was, but Councillor, I sit on the committee, Councillor Bernard mentioned, you know, that we are um, deficient in our soccer and our rugby and our outdoor lawn and all that. As we plan in our next budget, can we think about a downtown um, um, off leash dog park as well? Just throw that in the mix. <laughs> Thank you. And I think, Councillor Yanka, we, we had talked about the, the land being transferred over mm -hmm. the problems. Where Victoria Park? Uh, yeah, no, it's still going through a duty to consult. That's where it's at. That's the whole yes. Council yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Council Bernard, for your report. Just uh, you had mentioned there about the Simmons and the track being moved upstairs. Um, could we just keep in mind uh, um, um, the folks with disabilities? Uh, uh, they were. They did make some recommendations uh, at the open house, and uh, that we need to make sure that we don't get them. That if it's going upstairs, that we have to find a way so we have to get them up to the back. Yeah, just keep that uh, in the back of your hand. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the open house, you would have noticed that the elevator mm -hmm. is, is it's the, the elevator still, still work for that. It's just good. Just more good. Than the second floor, and that makes it a lot better. There's no interference with the Zamboni. Yeah. There's no interference yeah, with the Zamboni. So, so. I agree with it. It's a very positive move, but, but no, the elevator is next day. But thank you. Okay. Yeah, just to close. Oh, Councilor, got you. Just, just quickly, your worship, just piggybacking on Councilor Robert's comments. Um, I guess, and, and, and no one to blame, but all of us sit here um, at the first of the year and work on a capital project, what we want to get submitted, and we can't say yes to everything. So the list gets shortened up. So when you get a project on the capital expenditure list, you're hoping that it comes to fruition, whether it's however many streets going to be paved, whether it's a new ball field. Or, so, so part of it is, is, is getting it approved in this room, and then it is disappointing not to see it come to light. I know it went out to tender. Councillor Verts, right, he sits on finance. 
we we approve budget transfers almost every month so we could have looked at an internal budget transfer to make this project a goal this year like he, he, he's right we're missing out we're missing out on a season and that's gonna prolong another community for missing out on another say just snowballs from from there like i say it's when you get it on the capital project list it's nice to Nice to put a check mark beside and get a check get it completed. Yes. Okay. okay, so you know what? I realize how important the facility is. The Forty Griffin one's gone over well. I understand we want to build one. But you know what? We come back here in July. The toys is over budget. Nobody jumped up and said, Oh, let's take the finance, get some more money. No. Nope. We told you we're going to the problems, try and get money. Nobody said a thing in. You know what? We're still waiting on that. So yeah, you know what? Are we disappointed? Yeah. Is it going to happen next year? I would say so. But you know what, boys? Two years sit on finance. Two out of four would have been no problem bringing up the finance. If you want to grow that route. Uh, well, well, I was under the understanding that we had a service group that was uh, on board for money. That's yeah, the last. So were we? Yeah. That's the last that I heard. So what was the difference? Like, if if they were. But at that time, you know, it was a hundred thousand dollar budget. That's why we're going those groups. Yeah, but they, they made a commitment, didn't they, of a yep. certain dollar amount? Yep. So it wasn't 100000 with their commitment. No, no, no. It's, 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 it was a promise, it's a commitment over their budget that they didn't have enough. It, it wasn't the service group. Yeah. Um, but as it turns out, uh, that fund didn't have enough money, but the administrator put us on to this ICIP funding where it met all the criteria. And so our, our staff person filled out the application. That has to be in August, Frank. Early August. Excuse me, yeah. And we filled out the application for the final. It was submitted July 27th. Okay, so that's back in July. Okay. Uh, I, I, oh, sorry, we're just. No, no, no. You, just, just, just what it's about. Yeah, no, <laughs> just, just a comment. Just basically for, for everybody, really. Like like I say, we, we, we sit around after Christmas, work on a capital budget. Going forward, and it's nice to have everything going forward. We have a great big capital expenditure list. but. Maybe we should be a little bit more realistic in terms of what we can get accomplished within that 12 month period so we're not creating expectations out in the community. It could be anywhere, right? And anyone's board. Anyone's Just pretty jump to the council. Yeah, and I will. And, and, yeah. and I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I think, you know, that, that's why I started out by saying if you look the last two years, you see a lot of projects have uh, exploded beyond expectations of the cost. So when we, when we do uh, estimate, estimate cost, it's based on the year before. So I think a, a number of the projects, and you know, last year a number of projects were, were, were well in the budget, and a number of numbers they pushed off to this year. Uh, the same thing with this particular project and some others that we talked about last month. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but I think COVID-19 has exaggerated the, uh, the, the cost of a lot of our projects. So is it unfortunate? Yeah. Will it get done? I expect that it will. We put the application in, I didn't know it was that, we July 27th. Mm -hmm. That's, that's quite a while ago, so we've been, wait, we've been waiting work until July 27th, so we can give them the files. And that's where they call it. August and the elections call the involved. So we were hopeful that we would have heard we're back sooner than that, but I guess that's Okay. Yeah. And that's it. just wanted to say, Councillor Bernard, on the 21st of September, the staff from Parks and Recreation were a big help to the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Joe Giz Park. Councillors uh, Ramsey and Yankoff were there. The deputy with it uh, were all in were also in attendance. Uh, Roselle and Giz and Joanne and the Giz family, and they were very appreciative of the the work that Marlene Brighton and the city has done over the last 20 years. Exactly. So I wanted to thank thank the staff and councillors that showed up. Thank right. you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Are we all ready to go? Good. Okay. Water can soon. This is a house drawn. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to say Water and Sewer Utility Committee uh, met on September 16th, and the minutes are included in the package. We don't have any resolution for your consideration, but the manager has, has delightfully pointed out to me that we have over a thousand people now signed up for electronic billing. So that's a, it's a very big deal, especially for our, for our department. So. If anybody has any questions or concerns, I'll try to answer you the best I can. Thank you. Councilor Yanko. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councilor Duran. Just to note, too, I noticed that you all moved into closed session as well, so if we could follow the same um, process that we at least 
see uh, what the agenda is. Good point. Duly, duly noted there? Sure. Yeah, that should be no problem at all. I guess we'll all get to a new set of rules and we'll let it follow. Oh, dude, open, it, open this transparency to Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> Any other questions? <laughs> Richard, as always, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, public Works and Urban Unification Committee did not meet last month. Uh, the Civic Board of Personal Disabilities also did not meet uh, last month. Um, I have uh, two resolutions for your consideration. Uh, any questions, I'll do my best to answer along with Albert. Thank you. So one question was emailed to you, one was in your package. Councilor Drummond. I have a question about one of the resolutions. Can I stand up just to ask the question? Red? Or do you, you want to read it first? Or? Okay, we'll read it first. Great. <coughs> Your Worship, moved by Councillor Cloud, second by Councillor Duffy, that as per the conditions of the tender of 2021 sidewalk construction and the submission of Earth Forum Corporation in the amount of $507,075, <coughs> plus all principal taxes, be accepted, Your Worship. Okay. Question there, Councilor Drum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cloud, thank you for your report. Uh, I just have two questions, and it's about the resolution of the sidewalks. Now, I'm glad we had this discussion here previously. Um, we're all here where we talked about the projects not getting completed. Again, like, like Councilor Rivera and Councilor Cody, I was excited, you know, we, we had a uh, sidewalk going in finally in front of the Atlantic Baptist home where the elderly people can come out and walk on a sidewalk without falling in a three and a half to four foot ditch on, on, on uh, Centennial Drive. So I, I did tell the people at Atlantic Baptist and, and some of the residents that we were finally, after a number of years, we're finally going to get a sidewalk. And then the more I went into it, it was a half a sidewalk. So it was only going to go up to 27, I think, in Centennial. Um, so again, I, I went back and I said, well, you can only have a walk halfway up the street. Hopefully there's enough room to turn around and go back down. But, you know, again, I was excited. I, I did ask, you know, for pity uh, to see if we could look at it in our, in our budget to, to maybe do the whole street. You know, I knew it was a... It was a stretch, but you know your, your your manager was good enough to say, okay, we'll look at it at our committee level, which he did. And then I was more excited when we went out to tender on it uh, in September, because I said we, we passed the capital budget or whatever budget we passed in the spring, and you know I thought, okay, when are we going to get this done? Well, don't worry about it. It'll be September, maybe October. Great, but I know what happens in September and October things just don't seem to go ahead, right? So it was cautiously optimistic. And when the tender went out, we came back, thinking, okay, what, what, what's this now? Now we're way over, which I understand. But it comes back to, there were six projects that went to tender, and we agreed on two, or your committee agreed to send it to, to the council to approve. Now, I, I, I don't see what the cost and the other four projects were. And again, why were these two projects, you know, picked more so than than in this area? And I say for 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 myself, it's been a struggle for four or five years asking for Centennial Drive. Um, you know, in my, in my estimate, it's a safety concern because the elderly people don't have anywhere to go in a wheelchair. If they go across the street, it's a three and a half to four foot ditch there. So when it just comes back and says, okay, we're cutting those four and no explanations, I'm just like, wow, like it's not right. It's not right that you wait and wait and wait, you know, for something that's finally approved and you don't get it. But I guess I hear it from everybody else, you know, but that, that they're not getting approved and it's frustrating. But <clears throat> could you explain? like the process and the pricing of the other four and the process that came to picking these two. Thank you very much, Councilor Jerome, for your question. Um, I'll start by um, 
I mean, for what I can tell you about it, and then I'll let Albert take over because his um, staff did the recommendation, um, and then went on to playing with. But um, so um, what I'm told is that the the uh, time it took for the engineers to design took a lot longer for one, and so then by the time they got that, it became then the actual who's going to do the construction work, and that come back way overpriced in all six projects. Um, in this case, we're, we're lucky we, we managed to have, uh, uh, sorry, in this one we only had the, the one submission, sorry, and and, uh, and that makes it even difficult. And I think a lot of times what's happening here in COVID is they just throw that number out there hoping, you know, they don't want it, right? But they don't want the job, there's a bit, but because they were the only tender, the city has no, no, no recourse but to accept the tender. So for for the best of the city, I think staff decided that, you know, this is crazy, we gotta send these back and get better pricing next year. And I think that's that's what I've been told, uh, Councilor Durham. And and I'll, I'll let uh, I'll let Albert take over, but um, just to be clear folks, like I had nothing to do with who picked what. I stay out of that. Um, these I have no idea and the pricing would be a good idea. Um, of the other project, just so that the council could, could have a, have a you know, eyesight into what's going on. But, but at, the end, at the end of the day, I think we're hearing from all the departments, our tendering process takes longer. And I said to Al Baker last week, we need to change how we think about this stuff. And, and we, we get everybody's expectations up. But I think we need to engineer one year and go to tender on the actual work the following year. Then the expectations would be so bad. Like the rink is another example, right? By the time you get through all that, then you go and, and then of course we find that we don't have money now we gotta go look for more money so it's kind of the same thing but you know uh, and we're borrowing money to do these projects but there wasn't even enough money in to do the two streets we're actually borrowing money from from the other uh, parts of the uh, ken's corner and and the fire station and the fire station to even just do the two streets so uh, the mayor albert i'll let you take it good thank you sure so yeah, so originally there were six streets that were uh, going to be done and they were all designed. So the tenders came back, the design is back. Um, once we got some quotes back from the engineer on how, mu how these were going to be priced, we had a feeling that we probably wouldn't be able to do everything. So we put a stipulation in the tender specifications that one or none of these streets may go. So bid them individually so that once the bids came back, we could decide which ones to pick. Um, Greenfield Avenue was picked because it's been it's on our paving list this year to repave that street so we already have money allocated to repave that street and we want to uh, do the sidewalk and curbing all along there um, that's also been pushed about two years it was on the 2019 list for the sidewalks and pavement we pushed it this year because we couldn't get the sidewalks done um, after that we had Centennial Drive in Belmont we're the only other two streets that currently don't have sidewalks on them. So between those two, we tried to see which one was cheaper. And Centennial Drive came at 305,000. Belmont was 217. So because Belmont was $87,825 cheaper and we're already over budget, we need to borrow 21,705 from Kent's Corner. Instead of borrowing 101, or whatever it may be, we went with uh, Belmont because it was cheaper. That being said, the rest of these streets, like Grafton Street is on there already. It currently has sidewalks, so it's a removal and replacement. Lincoln and Sandstone are on there as well, and those currently have sidewalks on them. So we, you know, staffing at Public Works looked at it, and we said, those three streets can wait. We can retender in the spring, rebudget it <coughs> next year, and hope, you know, put it out earlier, get more than one bid, and have those done along with Centennial. But yeah, at the end it came to, we had two streets that needed to be done, and we, we picked the one that was cheaper, so we would have to borrow less money. Follow-up question there, Councilor. Yes, so you said the, the design. I know we did the design on Centennial a few years ago. Now, w would that be put in a locker somewhere? Does anybody have that, or? I'm not aware that that was done. Okay. I didn't look into that. So they, they did come out and peg that one, and then they peg uh, Elizabeth Street as well, I think, over by Parkview Drive. So, so you know, this was the design, was done, 
And then when I asked, well, what happened? Well, we had a change of committee or a change of direction, so Centennial wasn't done at that time. So this time, the 90,000 was put in the budget. So that's approved. I show them, and then you come back, well, no, you missed it again. So what, where does that 90,000, does it just go to the pot? So the, all the money that was allocated for the sidewalk, so the 90,000 for, we had allocated different amounts for each street, which that comes to about 486, all of that is going to Greenfield and Belmont for this year. Plus we're borrowing 21,705 from Ken's Corner. So was this in the capital budget, all these, all these streets? Yes. So this was all approved in the budget. Yes. Yeah. And then we didn't go to tender until late September. Yes. So th these were approved. These were budgeted. You know, they, it, it was an estimate before we had the engineering design done. Okay. So, so this what I, I take back is a concern for this council is is we do meet in January, February to get the budgets in, and we're not going out to tender till till late September. So what's the delay? Like we're pressed to approve the budget, right? We jam it all in in six hours, and we approve it, and then it's passed, and then nothing happens. So, and I'm not I'm not saying it's your fault by any stretch of imagination, and you're doing a good job. I, I know we have other projects in, in my ward that I'm happy with because again, it was a safety concern, right? And and you come up with the money, and you found the money. But this seems to be an ongoing project or an ongoing problem that I just, you know, again, like Councilor Rivera and Councilor Cody, hat in hand again, I'll have to phone Mr. Clo on Centennial Drive and tell him for the probably fifth year in a row, I lied, we're not getting it done again. No. So, you know, no. that's that's the frustrating part. Yeah. It's, it's they think that you're, they have the old adage of councilors of years ago that, hey, you know, Mr. Gron, you know, a good friend, pay my street, fill my ditch. Yeah, no problem, buddy, I'll look after you. But then when you come back and say, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, and you get the door slammed here or the carpet pulled in from under you, it's pretty frustrating to go back again and say, listen, you know what that I told you in the spring? I lied. You know, we can't do it. Now, Albert, can you look for those drawings that he's talking about with the plans? Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Thanks. Council Ryan. I, I think one of the things that we're missing too is, you know, once we pass the budget in April, it, it's just not a matter of going tender. Design has to be done. Tenders have to be drawn up. I mean, you go back to the to this outdoor facility, the multi-purpose facility in West Road, I mean, the budget was passed at the end of April. Uh, tenders were out at Quebec early July. So that was, that was totally tendered off the job, and, and we, we had, had one to go off. But, you know, uh, as we heard earlier, design has to be done. There's a lot of work that's been done as well. But my point is, I think we got to get back to approving the capital budget first in November. Now, it's not going to happen this year, but you got to get it because the province is at the door in December, January. So these other these other contracts, you get one person to apply in here for six sidewalk blocks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the price came in at Prop Six, but obviously it's well over what we guessed it. Sandstone Road, Lincoln Street, 1.33. 1. 1. So they've got their work lined up. So this is just great. So they just throw a big price at it. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, finance has to get the capital budget passed. But the capital budget is in February. Isn't it early March? We did it first. We did it when you in November. And that was to get it and get early pricing. That was when the year end was December. That was it should be passed in the... In the okay. Councilor Bird. Councilor here. Are you talking to the resolution? Well, oh no. <laughs> First, I want to ask. Questions. Questions called? Questions. No, I have a question. On this resolution? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. To Albert or the chair? Both. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so here we have Greenfield and Belmont yeah. selected over four other streets. I know that I've been pursuing uh, Passmore Street. The sidewalks are dangerous for the last two or three years. Uh, you know, we can end up with a lawsuit in our hands. I brought that up during the budget. And so, so having said all of that, so who made the recommendation for Greenfield and Belmont? Was that the staff or was that the committee? Councilor McLeod. Thank you very much, Staff Councilor. or committee? Staff okay. uh, made the recommendation uh, to the committee. 
Okay. Second question, Councilor Wheel. Staff made the recommendation, yes. uh, Councilor McLeod, to the committee. Yeah, and uh, if you just heard Albert's explanation, he, he just gave that explanation as to why they made that decision. Yeah. Your second question to Mr. Albert. What's your question, Albert? Well, I guess my second question is, um, you know, again, with respect to the tendering process, too often it seems to be the same old story. You know, we we uh, we fight it out at council level to to get projects approved only to find out that they're not being tendered till say September or August or whatever the case may be and the residents are left holding the bag. I mean, why, why, does, this why does this continue to persist in, 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 in this, say, in this department, for example, and why is that? Who's, who's responsible here? Well, is it the staff or is it the committee? Like, why, why does this continue to go on? Because there's a, there's a tremendous amount of fr frustration that's taking place here and you know it's great to say well we're going to pick two streets uh, you know and, and, and then get on get on with it when you have four other streets plus plus Passmore Street nothing being done okay, like it, Council, it, Council it just seems like it just seems like we're not very productive yeah. we're Council not very progressive and and, yeah. and 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 I don't know what the reason is he's going to give you the reason so, so thank you again Council for your question uh, it, this is totally frustrating, and uh, like I said to Albert, we need to come up with, I think in, in some ways, just because we pass in the capital budget, our expectations is that it's going to be done this year. Uh, unfortunately, especially in this particular year of COVID, everything slowed down to a crawl. Engineer design took longer, the pricing came in way higher, and at the end result, we're sitting here being disappointed. Uh, and But I will gladly take this back to the committee. Yeah. Um, with your suggestions of frustration and, and say, look, how can we do this so that when we go to talk next year capital budget, that we, you know, it, it should be a two, maybe a two phase project instead of just hoping to get all this work done one year, even though we pass the budget, it's probably being unrealistic and we're, we're setting ourselves up to fail. Thank you. Questions Thank you. called? Well, no, 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 no questions no, no, called. Question. Council, Twin, questions called. You got your two questions. We have to move on. It's I only minutes. asked one question. I only got a chance to speak once. Yeah, there's another resolution coming up. Okay, we're going to vote on the resolution, which is for the sidewalks, Greenfield and Bellman. Okay? Yeah. All of those in favor? Your Worship, just before we do that, I don't know if we're going down the wrong alley here. We, did, we, don't, we don't vote on operational things like paving. We advise council this is what's going to be done. Uh, and it should be the same with sidewalks, shouldn't it? Well, as the it CAO, the CAO. Yes. No, we don't, we, don't, hey, we don't have a resolution. Point of order, Your Worship. I wasn't allowed to ask a question. Hold on. We don't have a, we don't have a resolution Point of order, Mr. Mayor. asking for the permission to pay. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't allowed to speak, but you're letting Councilor Duffy speak. Why? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, just explain the transfer of funds, where we're going with it. What is the, it's the, the reason the resolution's here because transfer of funds, correct? It, it's here uh, uh, to advise council that there wasn't sufficient budget. It was a $1.33 million response to a $486,000 tender. Uh, we had to scale back, so we're looking for the approval uh, to approve the 486 plus the transfer uh, from uh, the uh, Ken's corner to complete the, to complete the works for you. To That's complete it. the work for you. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Council Tweed, the eight or nay. Yay. Councilor Drawn, yay or nay? No. Nine one. Okay. Next Your resolution. Your Worship, moved by Councilor Fowler, taken by Councilor Duffy, and as for the conditions of the tender on the Union Road snow dump, the submission of Duffy Construction in the amount of $505,425 plus all public tax to be accepted, and that the City of Shelltown enter into a 10 year lease with the Shelltown Airport Authority with possible extensions, uh, and further that the Mayor and CEO are sign all applicable documents with respect to the note of tender and lease. Question. Was that, was that in the... Just, just hold it. Did you have a question, Deputy? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And then you can go on the next side. Um, thank, thank you for the resolution, Council. I'm just wondering, it says math, math construction disqualified. Are, are you able to say why they were disqualified and what their, what their bid was? I'll, I'll let the... Defer to staff. Albert? Uh, I, I, I don't know at the moment what their bid was, but they were disqualified because they didn't complete uh, a section of the tender that was that they needed to. Okay, incomplete tender. 
Fogel. Yeah. Fogel. Fogel. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just a little surprised because I know they've done work for the city in the past. I'm just surprised to see them disqualified here. I guess I am a little hesitant uh, to spend half a million dollars on a piece of property that the city doesn't own only to try and get a 10-year lease signed. I know the snow's got to go somewhere, but that's pretty expensive. I mean, you look at a budget, 115000 and we're borrowing or have to move another 400000 Like, we've just talked about this for the last 45 minutes, and it's quite an investment, like I say, for a piece of property the city of Toronto doesn't even own. Um, you can respond, sir. Thank you very much. So, question. so, from what I, I gathered from all this, is uh, so we budgeted 114000 approximately, and um, as we went on for the search for land, as, as we all know, uh, there isn't any. And uh, this was the only possible site left due to the, the site that was where the new Canadian uh, mental health sorry, is going to go. Uh, uh, we were pushed out of there. So, uh, this is kind of a necessity. We don't have a choice. Um, and when we, this particular piece of land, when, when we budgeted 114, we were not considering that this particular piece of land needed quite a bit of infrastructure uh, as far as the soil content. I mean, we're going to put big heavy trucks in over top of this and it required a lot of work. And I hate to say it, but COVID has uh, upped the prices again. Everything is two, three, four times more expensive than, than it would be in a normal year. So, but unfortunately, uh, without this, we're, uh, we have no place to dump snow unless something else is a better idea. But uh, again, uh, it's it's a bugger. I don't know about where you want to add any more to that, but you might be able to. No, that's, uh, that, that you, you said it correctly. Um, <clears throat> like I said, we, we can't use the original uh, snow dump as you know, we, we used to dump it at the province. Uh, they're turning into a mental health facility. When we originally budgeted for this, for the snow dump, we didn't know the plot of land that we were going to be dumping at. So once we had the plot of land, once we went out again to tender to design it, um, it came back. We needed to do more work than maybe we originally thought. And you know, to, to make it compliant with the airport authority. We've had input from them on what they would like to see on their plot of land. This is what we need to do. This is the spec that the engineers that Coles and Associates have helped us come with, come up with, and that's... Shelton Airport Authority. And yes. this is a 10-year lease for sure with yeah. possible extension, yeah. so hopefully um, the Deputy Mayor will go well beyond yeah. that, uh, that uh, yeah. 10 years. But we did have to find a spot, as you all know, that uh, land is at a premium. Uh, close by where they can uh, dump the snow because due to operational cost, the further it is out, the more it's going to cost you. And so we will continue in the int uh, as we move forward to try to find lands, but those lands, if they can be found, are certainly not cheap. Okay. Councilor Duran and Councilor Williams and then Councilor Bernard. Councilor Duran. Well, thank you, Worship. I, I just had a concern. I read the resolution again about a 10 year lease. I had concerns over that. Okay. Uh, you know, We're all right. It's, it's in there, so. Good. Thank you. Councilor, well, can I answer that for you? If you, if you want okay. to. Thank you, Councilor Duran. So this was deferred from last month um, simply because we didn't have anything. Um, and then uh, we had to sit down with the, with the airport authority to, to uh, work out a, a scheme that's going to kind of at least work for, for a number of years with possible extension. So so that was the reason why it was deferred and uh, to give us time, the staff time, to uh, negotiate with the airport authority. And of course, you don't want to spend this money without having some years uh, in advance knowing that you're going to be there. So, so that, just so you're wondering where it was in the package, that, that's what it was. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you, and I sit on public works too, and like I'm like the deputy mayor too, like I was, wasn't too pleased with it because of the property we do not own, where we're spending half money now. But this is all for infrastructure, am I correct? Did you explain that? Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. to lead to the site, yeah. clean the site up. So that's this correct. is a one-shot deal. It's five hundred five thousand dollars. Yeah, th this doesn't. Yeah, this doesn't incorporate uh, the lease. The lease is, is separate. So the five hundred is is just to plan and do the site work, all the fill material. And we're not spending uh, half a million dollars in next year and half a million dollars the following year. No, that's no. Not. Okay, just want to clarify that for the rest of the question. Okay, Councilor Bernard. <coughs> um, I'm just wondering, do you have a timeline and when the infrastructure work will be completed? You want to answer that up there, please? Yeah, um, I, I had conversations with the contractor and it should be you know, three weeks. If we do award it today, they, they can get it done fairly quick before the snow comes. Good. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, have to be, yeah. Question? I said it has to be. <laughs> the, um, no, the question? Is, is the lease just for a dollar? Dollar a year. What? It's a dollar a year plus the percent of, uh, of property tax. So that this is about 15% uh, of the overall piece of property from what we understand. So it'll be 15% of the value of that tax on that uh, on that resource land. Right, so this this, this 500 plus is to uh, prepare the site to be able to get in there. To the stock, so. Correct. It's a potato field, right? And we're turning it, in from a, turning it from a potato field into a snow dump. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Questions called. Questions called. Okay, great. All those in favor, please put up your hand. Okay, now just one second. Just, want to somewhere. Uh, just keep them up, please. Councillors Bernard, McKay, Duffy, Ramsey, Duran, Councillor Yankov, Revert, <laughs> Councillor McLeod, Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? Yay. Yay. All those against? Deputy Mayor, against. Okay. Anything else there, sir? No I do have one quick question. Sure. At For chance, public works? Yeah, just as a chance being moved by council here. Keep going. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor oh, McLeod, for your report. I was going to ask this uh, earlier, but I didn't, uh, and I apologize. Um, mailboxes, just quickly. I know all the rules around the mailboxes, or I think I do. Anyways, is there some mailboxes? I, I know in the wintertime we have a con we contract someone to clear the uh, snow. In the summertime, it just seems that some mailboxes are, are grass vendors cut, and some aren't, some are paved, some aren't paved, everything else. And I know that it's up to, uh, it's been my experience anyways, that we have to make a call to basically Minister Casey and say, can you do this for me? Can we not just put something in, play, in place from the city to make sure that all these things are done across the city as opposed to just kind of piecemealing it and saying some are paved, some aren't paved. Come the spring, these are gonna be muddy, we got seven foot grass around some mailboxes. We have some mailboxes clean. I just, it's just consistency. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it is a good idea. Um, I know most people have been frustrated with mailboxes, and it's not only just like in front of the mailboxes, sometimes across the street, too. That's affecting other people's properties. But, but I guess my only concern would be, and it's something uh, we could uh, bring back to the committee and look at, and that is, uh, you know, is there any legal uh, as to once we pay, do we then become responsible? And so that'd be a question I think I'd like to have you answered. But certainly we'll bring it up at the public works and there. Yeah. Yeah. Just to follow. Up. Thank you, uh, yeah. Councilor Scott. Yeah. Paper or gravel doesn't matter. We clean. Yeah. I'm just I'm just saying for the for to keep it clean, just to maintain. Better, yeah. If we can work out something with the fans to say that you know we'll contract yeah. someone to maintain the grass around them, yeah. such as we contract. Yeah. To do the snow removal yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. No, it's, it's a valid point, and I'll uh, we'll definitely put it on our agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Dorf, yeah. 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 Okay. Here, Joe. No. Just. Thank you, Albert. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we did have another item to discuss at the close in closed session, but I don't think people want to stay here. No. So we do have to come back, Mr. Mr. Okay, Mr. Mr. Kelly, we have to get the audited statement through, right? So right now, uh, they're in the final throes of completing the financial mm -hmm. um, statements. It will go to Finance Committee first, uh, but if all goes well, uh, we need to get them into the province, so we're potentially scheduling for... Mm -hmm. Leave it till Monday? Yeah. Good. Five o'clock? Is that all right? Well, is it, is it just that the dog is going to be in war? Is that why I'm going to Yes, that'll, that'll happen. Yep. Yeah. You can't do it at 12? Uh, depending on council's uh, you agenda, want to do it at 12? Uh, we can try to. I need 12. 12. Can, can, we, can we do it? Okay, so that is it.
Uh, I need a motion to go to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? No. 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 no.